Good morning and good afternoon to all. On behalf of Solution Plus team, I am pleased to welcome you all on today's session. Today is the third day of the Kathmandu specific training, training on e-mobility and also the last day of the virtual session. However, we'll, have, we'll be having in-person on-site visit tomorrow here in Kathmandu as a part of this training. This session is run as a Zoom meeting and so we will start off our session with basic housekeeping to make you all feel comfortable with the platform and share what's in store during our session. First of all, please note that the session is being recorded. The recording and the presentation will be available afterwards. We have muted everyone by default so that we'll, we won't be accidentally disrupted during the session. But when you talk, you want to talk later during the discussions or question answer session, just click the microphone icon in the bottom bar to mute or unmute yourself. If you encounter any challenges on that, please send a message to our host or co-host. As this is a Zoom meeting, you have the option to have your camera on and off. However, to minimize the disruption due to bandwidth, kindly switch off, the, switch off your camera meantime. Uh, and we will have question answer later during which you can switch it back on when you are speaking. If you have questions, please submit it via the chat box. You are welcome to use the chat box throughout the session for your comments and questions. We'll have a dedicated time for question answers in between the presentations. However, considering the time, we, we encourage you all to write your questions and comments in the chat box. And if time allows, we might be able to some to take some questions verbally as well. Let us see. To ease our discussion later, could we ask you to rename yourself with this, starting off your Zoom handle with your name, country, and then the affiliation from which organization, the ministry you are uh, representing, academia, institution, or NGO. Uh, we see this aiding us in knowing where the questions are coming from in the chat box. So while that is being done, we'd like to know you more and this give us a better picture of the participant in the session. Yeah, in the session. So we have a slide of question here. Tell us in which sector do you represent? So out of, we have 26, 27 people in the session and out of uh, uh, all, we have received the response from 14 so far. Maybe may I ask uh, my colleague from Solution Plus team to uh, take the screenshot of this screen? Uh, thank you. Next slide, please. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, today is the third day of the training. So let me quickly recap the first and second day of the training. On the first day of the Carfando specific e-mobility training, uh, it was fo focused on e-mobility policy and planning. We had a presentation on different um, policy and planning aspect uh, from Nepal and, and from the Ministry of Physical Infrastructure and Transport, including other agencies. And we, ha we also had a, a panel discussion on the first day, and it was uh, very fruitful to uh, hear from uh, various governments. There, there were a federal government representative the provincial government representative and, uh, as well as the local government representative. And I'm sharing the um, slide response that we received in the first day. And um, uh, in it, what is the, uh, we asked the question with the person, what is the main challenge for the promoting in Nepal? And we received that um, it is due to lack of uh, political uh, uh, prioritization, lack of political will to prioritize the EV. And uh, we also uh, asked um, a similar question in the second day, that is yesterday, and, and there were two questions. Uh, is vehicle retrofitting a viable option in Nepal? And in that question, we received uh, from uh, 71 people, um, we received the uh, yes answer. That is, uh, colleagues are saying that uh, retrofitting is viable in Nepal. And the second question was an operation and maintenance of EG, EVs. And, uh, we received the response that uh, less EV, EVs operation and maintenance is less complicated and uh, requires less maintenance than IC vehicles. So for the today's session, Mr. Bursan Tuladar and myself will be your moderator. I am um, myself, Sankar Sharma. I am associated with uh, Clean Air Asia as a national transport coordinator. Uh, Mr. Bursan Tuladar is the board member of Saja Atayat and he is 
leading the initiative to introduce electric vehicle in Saja that fleet. Saja had recently signed an agreement to procure 40 e-buses, and there are plans to uh, procure the more. So uh, while um, introducing about today's session, we have five presentations in today's session. The first presentation will be from Ham Weekend, and um, which will be focused on charging station and technical standards, and um, followed by the presentation from NEA, which will be focused on planning and charging infrastructure in Nepal. Uh, and, and then the third and fourth presentation will be focused on charging infrastructure development in Nepal. And we'll uh, hear from colleagues from India and uh, South Korea about the cases from their country. Uh, then we'll conclude the session. So without further delay, let me uh, introduce our first speaker. We, we have Ham Weekend for the first session as a presenter. Uh, presenter. Mr. Ham Weekend is the co-founder and managing partner of Fear Automobile. Ham is over 30 years of experience, uh, and he will be sharing about, about charging station technical standards and guidelines and network planning electric, and electricity uh, management. Uh, we already have him in, in the regional training, and, uh, and we, we are really pleased to have him on board for this training, Kafun is training as well. Uh, Ham, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you for the kind uh, introduction. And uh, yes, uh, I will give you a, a quick overview of our experience uh, in, uh, in charging infrastructure on planning on this um, highly impo important topic for the, uh, for the uptake of electric mobility, of course. Uh, so I'm a founder and managing partner of Yale Automotive, uh, and we are working in e-mobility uh, all over Europe uh, and uh, both on, on the light duty uh, vehicles, uh, passenger cars, uh, heavy duty uh, trucks, buses, but also a lot with governments, with European commissions. We are running uh, portals for the European Commission on, electric, on alternative fuels and electric mobility. Uh, so happy to share some of our experience with you. And I saw that quite a bit of institutes today on board. And we think that you have a very important role uh, to, uh, to educate and to help assist the cities in, in realizing the, the, the charging infrastructure. So I will give you a snapshot of, of, uh, for, of in, uh, the charging infrastructure planning, a little bit of bit, this and that, all kinds of things that we think is relevant. Uh, but every slide can be exploded in many other elements. So it's just a very quick overview. Importance of charging infrastructure, typologies of uh, different types, technical specifications, interoperability, city planning, um, uh, innovation trends. There's only one or two slides because we didn't have time for more for this, uh, this session today. For an uh, open door. Uh, get the vehicle moving without charging like fear cannot drive it's obvious uh, but it has to be sufficient available so uh, it's, you have to be able to uh, to find it quickly uh, the power and the charging speed have to uh, have to fit this sounds like an open door but please it isn't it is really a topic about where uh, all the times there are mistakes made in reasoning what kind of kilowatts is the charger uh, providing and what actually can the vehicle absorb uh, also on street charging, so slow charging, one, two, three phase, uh, and um, different uh, the, the amps. Uh, so it's really it's a uh, it, it's, it's something too that comes quite close and uh, when planning. Uh, it has to be user uh, user friendly, so it has to be the interaction has to be positive and uh, provide satisfaction. It has to be reliable. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, we have gone through all the learning effects in Europe in all the countries still do, where charges are there are not working are not interoperable. We'll go into this into a detail. Then um, the business case has to fit. So a business case where charging is very expensive doesn't help electric mobility uptake. And then again, the capacity utilization of the charges won't be very high. So it's a good balance between the business case of the charging infrastructure providers and uh, the electromobility market uptake, uh, go, going hand in hand, of course. What are the main concerns that you see uh, in, uh, in, uh, and for, of uh, EV drivers and why is charging infrastructure uh, important? Uh, it's a survey of uh, McKinsey. Uh, if we do the same service in the Netherlands, in, in other European countries, we say, we see the same, uh, same, uh, same elements. We see that the uh, the uh, uh, charging of the, lots of things are important, like the availability of vehicles, uh, uh, the cost of the vehicles, and of the driving. But we see through the years, we see that 
uh, the, uh, the range uh, and the availability of, uh, of charging, how easy it is, is going up in, uh, in importance relatively. And why is that people have experienced that it's difficult? Uh, they see the vehicles are getting, are getting affordable, the new vehicles are getting more affordable co co compared to new, to, uh, to new petrol and the diesel cars, but the, uh, the, uh, the charging is often still a, a hassle. Uh, and then you have your range, you have to be certain that you can always reach your target. So important uh, to have that, uh, have, have that in place and well functioning. When we look at the, the, uh, the KPIs and the performance indicators for, uh, for charging for the EV users, we see that first there has to be uh, sufficient coverage, there has to be enough charges. When you go to visit friends and you are at home, so the, 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 the city, the local, uh, the local, the slow charges has to be in place, as well as the fast charges. And again, it's not only about sufficient coverage, but has to be at the right locations. It also has to be to uh, be easy to operate. There can be a charger, but if you need to subscribe uh, before you can use it, or that you need a contact before you can use it, or you need to uh, apply for a specific charge card, you cannot use your own, then there is actually no charger for you there available. So coverage uh, uh, is, is not just having the charges there, but also being that it can be used by the people. Seamless charging is very much the uh, same topic uh, that you can internationally in Europe, many countries, very dense, uh, uh, populated, a lot of cross-border, uh, uh, you have to be able to, to do that uh, easily. The roaming has to, be, uh, has to be the right assistance if it doesn't work. Um, but also roaming in a country, it, but even in the city, you have different networks where you want to use different networks. So roaming between the networks has to be seamless. Payment has to be transparent, so not that you get a bill at home that you say, okay, this was pretty expensive. What happens? Eh? So it's not something, uh, not a, a theoretically uh, example, but it happens that suddenly you pay a lot and you think, okay, I could have filled uh, my, uh, my petrol tank for that uh, twice or three times. You have to be new, know in advance what you pay so that you can decide do you want to charge or not. And the facilities, when you have a fast charge on the highway, uh, yeah, can you, uh, can you, uh, is there a toilet, is there, uh, can you buy something to drink and to eat, uh, for example, uh, this, so this is just some, some snapshots of the importance, of course, that the typologies, the types, there is uh, the highway charging, so we call it the opportunity charging down the, uh, under, when you're driving to another location, you have the workplace charging, so that you, you with your car, you come with the, at, the, at the parking place of the employer, and you can, uh, you can uh, charge your, your car. Uh, home charging, actually, the most important uh, thing, even if it's home charging on your uh, private premises, or that is home charging on the, uh, the public uh, uh, domain, extremely important. And so there are different options, uh, but also, of course, there are different, uh, there are different vehicle types. Now, this, uh, I think this speaks for itself. You have uh, taxi fleets, electric ones, heavy duty, uh, and the waste collection fleets, you have distribution uh, vehicles, buses, uh, this, uh, this city um, delivery. And uh, fleets, all those need specific types of charges. You can often not mix it. You can create synergies, but you cannot combine the things. And uh, taxis, different uh, ways where you know the taxi has to, the driver has to be certain that it doesn't reduce his business case, in case of being able to pick up passengers, because then the electric vehicle could get very expensive for uh, him. So there are different options. We go, uh, we won't go very much in detail, but some we, we will uh, touch upon in this presentation. And of course, the different technologies, so from the pentagraphs, from the, for the bus charging, for example, uh, to the, uh, the plug charging, uh, the, the high power chip plug charging for the trucks. Uh, going into the passenger vehicles in the, the, the private fleet, looking at the, uh, the different uh, charging profiles um, and all have their own specific characteristics. Uh, like charging at home, most easy. Go driving, coming back home, putting the vehicle into the, uh, plugging the vehicle in, and in the morning it's full. Um, all users that that all users that the, almost almost all users that you ask after that have bought bought an electric car are so happy that they that they can do this so easily. They, their car is always ready to go, um, and no hassle. But thanks to the gasoline stations, just at home, yeah, the cheap and lower electricity prices. Public area, if you don't have your, your own drive, uh, drive lane, your own parking space, you can, uh, you can 
park at the street. Uh, you should be very clear and very uh, near to your home, so you don't have to uh, walk miles uh, from your vehicle to your uh, for the parking space. At night, you can uh, combine it with public parking areas uh, that are not in use at daytime. Rapid transit, rapid charging in transit. This is on the highway, for example. Uh, all kind of options. Uh, and each has its own has their own business model, charging pattern, uh, charging speed, uh, um, the type of, of charger, so CCS fast charging or, uh, or also a type 2 uh, slow charging, for example. In all these typologies, the specifications and the interoperability is key. There are uh, still a number of, uh, of charging types. Uh, and um, over the world, so there's no st standards uh, worldwide in charging. But luckily, <laughs> There is a standardization and in the different uh, the, the, the different regions uh, nowadays. So at least that uh, in Europe there is a standard. In uh, North America, North America there's a standard. And, and we are also quite happy that the, the European uh, uh, CCS2 standard is quite uh, well spread over, uh, over, the, over the world for good reasons. Often the technical uh, te technical uh, capabilities. But I want to what we really want to stress is it's not the vehicle manufacturer that defines the standard of their vehicle. In a region, uh, the policy makers have to take in mind that it's their country, their region that sets the standards. So the vehicle manufacturers have to uh, adapt to, uh, to that. Uh, so uh, not like some bus manufacturers uh, that have their own, uh, their own plug types. Uh, and create a lock-in. You can imagine that if you buy a charging infrastructure of a bus manufacturer with their own uh, their own plug type, that if you buy next uh, bus uh, or with pentograph system or whatever specific ones, not uh, or not, not interoperable, then if you buy your next fleet of buses, you can you can hardly avoid buying the, the, the another and having to buy the same brand again because you are locked in. So this is important. Different solutions, different vehicle types. Uh, types uh, here, um, overhead uh, uh, catenary uh, charging, uh, and um, here uh, pantograph, uh, the, the power track charging. Here you see the, the pantograph uh, the charging, induction charging. Here, uh, all kinds of new technologies are coming uh, coming up. Uh, and some are very uh, very helpful. Uh, catenary charging is still a little bit searching for is this going to take off or not. It has good. Good, uh, uh, good advantages, but also quite expensive. Uh, pantograph charging for buses is not go is uh, definitely not going away. It's definitely a solution that's going to stay. Uh, induction charging, we have to see what uh, what will will happen with that. But most important is that that you think ahead. Where are you going to use? Uh, what's the application of the vehicles and the charging? And this is a, a business uh, breaker or business maker. Very important. Uh, and what can sound very logical is a bus. And what you often see is a bus company, even also the same for truck companies, they want to have to replace their diesel vehicle one on one with an electric one. Meaning in the morning you charge, the vehicle drives around, and in the evening it gets charged again. That's mostly easy. But it's also quite expensive because the bus is expensive. If you have one, two, three, five uh, buses, uh, ten buses, it doesn't matter because then it's still probably the most cheap option. But if you're going to hundreds or thousands of buses in fleets, you know, the so bus sizes can be pretty, uh, pretty big in the large cities. Then the uh, the balance between the cost of the bus, the size of the battery, the charging infrastructure investments uh, start to tip, and it's much more. It's much better to have lots of opportunities charging on the way at the bus stops and have, uh, have smaller batteries uh, in, the, in the buses, making the investment tipping towards uh, cheaper to invest in the, the charging infrastructure. When we speak about uh, interoperability, back again a little bit, it's in all sectors, but let's go back to the, uh, the passenger cars. A charger needs to be able to communicate with the vehicle. It's logical, but it's not like a plug at home where you put in uh, your machine and it works. It's, uh, it's really, uh, there is communication between, this is the ISO standard, for example. Uh, there's the integration testing uh, taking place between the vehicle and the, and the charger, really very important. And this is developing all the time. 
And so as a city, take care that your country follow the standards when you, uh, when you specify regulations or concessions. Then there is the, the, the complication between the charger uh, and the back office or so the management system of the charger. Very important that uh, this is via a well adapted standard. This is OCPP is now worldwide leading. Um, uh, standards it's, it's uh, uh, developed uh, in, in the Netherlands, but nowadays it's an open, so it's open uh, protocol. So really, uh, the whole world is improving this uh, protocol stepwise. But then there is from the charge the system of the charges, charge point, op charge point operator, a lot of communication taking place to do the payments, to do the services. You can see them here, OSPI and all kind of other uh, uh, protocols. Here is where uh, still standards have to uh, have to. Um, and, uh, be defined a little bit more. We see OSPI being used uh, pretty much uh, as standard for communication on the on the payment. And here, where you can see uh, back into the energy system, standards are less uh, less uh, mature. So where you can, uh, in fact, especially when you want to uh, start to uh, do smart charging and vehicle to grid, we'll come back to that later on. It's important that all the whole system works with the same standardization, so you can really. Uh, also start from a public interest, start to, uh, to steer the, the charging and electricity use, but will really help you with the investment uh, cost. Uh, many stakeholders, you see energy supplier, you see the charge point infrastructure and the uh, manufacturer, so the one who manufactures the charging infrastructure, uh, the, the charge poles. Then the, uh, the charge point operators, so the one uh, who owns the network, the one who sells the, uh, the electricity to the, uh, to the user. The, uh, the host uh, or sometimes is located, for example, at a gasoline station, uh, some charges from a charge point operator. Then there is uh, the roaming possibility where you can uh, roam across uh, the, the network, where you can use your one subscription to um, uh, to, to charge at different locations and, uh, and the, the mobility service provider. So lots of act the actors. Uh, and, and again, communication is key because uh, it might sometimes, you will see that, uh, you saw that also in Europe, it might sometimes seem interesting for those uh, uh, actors to create a sort of monopoly. Um, and this is a public, uh, public uh, really um, of public importance to take care. This is an open market where uh, uh, the, the user is, uh, is uh, the end user companies, either company user or a private user are centric or central. Here you see uh, on the left side of the slide, you see uh, lots of, uh, of logos. This is logos of charge uh, cards, uh, right, uh, right picture, right hand picture. You see that there are some uh, Examples of these charge cards where you can charge, you activate the charger with. Um, you don't want this situation. You want to make it very easy for the user to charge with one subscription with one card everywhere, or even ad hoc with his payment card at every charger. Because this creates uh, confusion, creates lock-in, this create, creates irritation at the charge, uh, at the, the, for the EV user, and limits the uptake. To, to summarize, what is then the interoperability? So the interoperability ability of the vehicles, charges, network, and management systems to interact and manage data to ensure safety, they can charge safe, compatible, uh, the compatibility of equipment and protocols, uh, functional is over always work and is reliable and that the system is always available. So the vehicle, the power supply, the energy management, the operator, the back office um, uh, provider, uh, the back office, the CPO, uh, and the charger connectivity and the, uh, the hardware needs to all interact seamlessly. It's, it sounds like an open door. Please take in mind this is this can be pretty much a nightmare and think ahead. Uh, for this. Uh, so in the, in the many countries like uh, the US, uh, also European countries, have had uh, lots of experience with this. So you, there is no reason to, uh, to make the same mistakes that, that we made. Uh, it's important. Um, and also when I mentioned the US, so please take in mind the first situation there, where you could have five different charges next to each other. You needed, <laughs> depending on which uh, subscription you had, you could use one of them. That's a situation more you, that you don't want. Because in the end, the society pays for the grid connection because there can be the situation that five vehicles charge there in parallel and are not uh, able to, to start to certainly charge uh, smart because it's not, uh, not allowed. You have access to that as society and 
you have to increase the grid connection. So in the end, the society pays for these, uh, these things. And so it's important to, to think ahead and to take care that you are in control as a city, as a public authority. City planning, what's often used in Euro Europe uh, is a charging ladder. First priority is also always, can a user charge his vehicle at his own premises? It's cheapest for society if you can just, when somebody can realize the charger at their own, uh, at their own uh, land, at their own territory, and invest for it uh, themselves. Also, the cheapest solution to realize. Second is, can you do it close to the home or the company uh, at uh, an uh, and in public space, but connected to the, 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 uh, the private grid of, of the household, so of the business. That can also be a, a pretty uh, economic solution. Then in public space, on the public uh, grid, that's the next, uh, the next uh, priority level. And then the, uh, uh, but, uh, but also being semi-public, so, uh, so that's also uh, open for, for, for wider public, uh, but located closer to and then a public recharging, uh, uh, so really in the, uh, the public de domain can also be fast charging. And here's also, you see the right side, the right side you see how much influence uh, the authorities have uh, on the, with, their, with their policy. What we normally recommend is to, to do this, the planning of a charger in the city via a layered approach, so the strategic uh, planning. Uh, to look, for example, at what kind of charges are already in place, are already installed, what's the current capacity utilization, are there one where they are not used and should be others located nearby, what are the new requests from inhabitants, the regulation in, in uh, the Netherlands and other European countries is that if you have a vehicle, electric vehicle, then normally uh, the city uh, is, is uh, obligated to, uh, to provide a solution for charging um, uh, if you if you have, do not have your own uh, drive uh, drive lane uh, next to your house, uh, and that has to be in a number of meters uh, from your home, realize so maximum three four hundred meters walking. And of course, the, for the for the charging itself, you have to pay. Normally, it's a commercial company realizing the charges, but uh, and the the space has to be uh, provided. The traffic flows. What are the big traffic flows through the city so that you can try to create synergies with vehicles passing by. But are parking locations where you can maybe at night use them for, for charging of, uh, of private of inhabitants and daytime commercial uh, parking space. What are the, effect, the expected EV uptake patterns? So where are the neighborhoods, people living where you expect the quickest uptake? So uh, higher income levels, uh, um, uh, higher education levels we normally see where that's the quickest uptake of electric mobilities. And there you would like to cluster already the first investments on charges. Stakeholders to co cooperate with, uh, supermarkets, amusement parks or whatever, where you can, uh, uh, where they can make a business daytime for the, with charges and at nighttime you can help, uh, the, the, the inhabitants of your city can, uh, can do the overnight charging and, uh, and parking. Uh, grid map, where are the limitations? Uh, other relevant factors, is there a mobility hub? Is there, are there metro stations, subway stations, for example, with a lot of power, where you can uh, quite cheap realize the charging infrastructure? And most logical, logical, most important, follow a hands-on approach. <laughs> That's go out and look. It's not only mapping and, uh, and strategic planning, but it's also looking at the location. Okay, this is, would, be, would be superb spot. Uh, but then the first planning you do on a higher level. Uh, work with the utility company on the grid, so that I also already mentioned, combine it with high power sources of electricity sources, like uh, eBus depot, depot, for example, or subway metro or grid. And uh, try to make smart combinations, also explained. So, for example, this is mobility hubs where you can have the, where the, where the train and the buses uh, are. Uh, uh, the station is where you can have a taxi station, but where you can also have, part in the, for example, shared vehicles uh, being charged, the charge, so try to combine it. Very important as a city, this one, um, take care that you have the right monitoring. So it's really the city is in control. So that you know uh, how many charging sessions, or how many users, so that you can steer as a city also where you, not only from an investment side, but also from an urban planning side, where you want to, uh, to, uh, to stimulate the uptake of electromobility more and where you would like to have more charges. 
the, uh, now this is an example and, uh, of a uh, fast charging station, but can also be in a city, for example, can be on the highway. Um, go quick, go over this. When you go into planning, and this is, I'm going to go in the, run very quickly over this slide, but if you go uh, into the planning of charging infrastructure, uh, please take in mind that uh, there are a number of costs. There's one-time costs. You have the electricity network, grid connection, transformer, power cabinet, charging point. All those things you need to invest, the investments are needed. Uh, these can be pretty high, uh, but also the recurring cost can be pretty high, depending on the, the way a country uh, uh, calculates the, uh, the recurring cost, yearly cost. So is there a capacity, a peak capacity rate, for example, service and maintenance. And this can also pretty much define what kind of charging infrastructure you would like to realize uh, in the city and what you can realize. And if it's useful to do the fastest uh, charging uh, possibility or not. When you go into the planning, it's already important to think ahead about the parking charging uh, utilization policy. Uh, we have, again, uh, try to avoid the mistakes that we made uh, making uh, an, uh, a ghost charger, as uh, you call them. They are realized somewhere but never used. Uh, uh, but charges also for public acceptance need to be used because you're taking away parking spots from petrol cars often. And the owner of the petrol car might, might not like that, especially not when the parking spot for the, the electric vehicles all the time empty because nobody's using it. So it's also for the acceptance quite important. So, but uh, having a high occupancy rate, high capacity utilization rate uh, is important because it reduces the use of public space. Um, Otherwise, you need more charging parking locations, reduced installation maintenance costs and investment uh, costs, uh, pretty uh, important. Um, and again, uh, the, accept the, uh, the acceptance, I would say, is even the most important that we see. We see uh, situations where, where people are really annoyed when they know that that, that was their parking spot. It's not theirs, public, but they were theirs, but they thought it was the, they used it every day. And now there's a, the city says, I'm going to plan a charger right there. And then you see people scratching on the cars because they are a little bit angry that they can no longer park, park their vehicles there. So, so really the acceptance is important. And then also the restrictions on the use of, uh, of uh, EV parking lots. We'll come back to that in a second. Different parking rates. Uh, so, for example, uh, you can say the lots, the parking lots can only be used while recharging the ve vehicle can be uh, can be used whatever. That was the early situation in, the, in in many European countries. If you had an electric car, even if you didn't charge, you could use the, the charging spot for the for the electric vehicle. That's no longer the case because uh, there are too many uh, electric vehicles and too few uh, uh, chargers. So now you can only use it when you're actually charging at most locations. And otherwise it can be towed away, for example. Um, I can also say it's open for chargers, uh, charging of EVs uh, during uh, daytime, for example. Uh, uh, and in nighttime, it's open for everybody. It can be very sp specific situations. We see that in Germany quite a bit. I think it's not optimal. Uh, but of course, if there is a pressure on the parking space, it can be a solution. Uh, it can be different parking rates, so it's free parking, that's, that's, that was, that's often a nice trigger in the early days of uh, electric mobility. You can do free parking, you can even, uh, uh, even offer uh, the former city, it's quite cheap. Okay, you can also do free charging in the first, uh, first year, for example, first two years of your market pickup or five years, whatever, how quick it goes. Uh, that can be quite an interesting driver. What Amsterdam did, they said, in the early days, if you have a vehicle, then you have a uh, guaranteed electric vehicle, they have a guaranteed parking spot uh, where parking is a nuisance in uh, Amsterdam. So you also have search for parking spots, even if you have, a, if you, if you have paid for, have a paid uh, allowance for, for parking uh, during the, uh, the year, permit, parking permit, then still you have to search. But if you had an electric car, you had them in front of your house and it was for you. So this was a real drive for, uh, for fast EV uptake, but it can only be temporarily, you can imagine. Regular parking rates, so you have to, uh, to, park, to pay normally, That's not, and you can also do progressive parking rates. You can also do the bit electricity prices, so the different ways. We say if you park longer than three hours, then your car should be full, and then you start to pay more for parking and charging. Um, this is the, uh, the Amsterdam example, what I just explained. Um, 
Yeah, uh, quickly, two snapshots, two, one or two, uh, about innovation uh, opportunities. I already highlighted the, the high investment cost of grid, uh, of grid investments, so the, the electricity grid to, uh, to create uh, the, the, you know, sufficient power for the charges. This is, uh, uh, even if the grid on the national level in many countries is, is sufficient, you always uh, will see problems in neighborhoods on local level, at least on city level. But you can turn it around. You can say, no, I see this, uh, this, uh, this charging as an opportunity instead of, a, uh, of a, uh, an uh, extra cost. First, by smart charging, you can reduce the, the, uh, the charging uh, to moments that, you, uh, that, you, uh, that there is not, not so much demand. So uh, the vehicles are charged, for example, in the middle of the day when there is less uh, demand in some depending on your, your the characteristics of your electricity use in the country, but this is a case in the Netherlands, for example. But peak times, morning, early morning, evening, when all the microwaves and everybody starts to cook, and the heating gets higher, and you don't want the vehicles to, to charge. So you would reduce that already. And the next step is that you say, let's, let's start to have the vehicles, the batteries used, so that they power back into the grid, the vehicle to grid. And you can imagine that if you start to do this, so that you charge the vehicle on the moment, for example, when there is enough, uh, there's, uh, uh, enough power, or even better, when there is enough wind power or solar power, that you're, that you're improving also the business case for your renewables. Because your renewables, uh, when there is too much on a certain part of the day, they, they are not have to be stopped, so the windmills have not to be... Uh, uh, deactivated for some time if there's really too much power. Uh, but you can really use this power and put it into the, the vehicle. So it's flattening the curve, it's flattening the, the, the energy use, and it's really a driver for EV, uh, up to, for EV, for the for reducing e e the cost of e mobility, so for e drive for EV uptake, but also a driver for uh, the renewable energies. Uh, um, so this is something to really look into. Another thing that I would like to highlight is that the country, the city is in control. So with regulation and also with public procurement, you define what you want in your city. If you don't do anything, then you will have lots of different charge point operators with a different, uh, different design charges. Do you want this as a city? Maybe so it's fine, it's not, not, not good. If you want to have the charging done in uh, not on the street, this is the, uh, but if you want to have parking, the, the, not of the, the street, but in park, uh, parking garages in general, this is the time to act because you can uh, start to, uh, to steer towards charging in park, uh, parking garages, for example, instead of on the street, if you would like that, that's depending on your city policy. But also, if you want interoperability, if you want to, be, uh, to have seamless use of the, of the user throughout the city, different network, maybe different cities, and you can all roam freely, uh, where you have the cost in control, you can put in the tenders, you can specify what the maximum prices are, or you can tender based on the lowest price for electricity. This is your moment to be in control and to define what you want from your charging system uh, and to work together with the commercial sector to realize this. The worst thing what can happen is that, uh, which is because you, it's really still small, as you say, we leave it up to the market and they will define because then you will get a, a a patchwork of different uh, solutions not being in trouble. So this is my uh, presentation. Um, thank you. It's the last, last slide. Uh, I hope it was helpful uh, and I expect a lot of questions from you, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, I think they are now, but they can also be uh, at the end, but uh, leave that up to the organizers. So, thank you. Uh Thank you very much, Ham, for very comprehensive and informative presentation. Uh, thank you for, for covering so many topics in your presentation. This was very informative, uh, informative, especially for the audience from Nepal, from uh, our country. So that was very informative. This is Sagar Gyawali uh, from Nepal Electricity Authority. He is the project manager for the electric vehicle charging infrastructure development project at the Nepal Electricity Authority. As many of you might know the, uh, that the NEA is currently working to establish charging uh, stations in various parts of the country. And he is leading that work uh, from the NEA. And he, uh, talking about his uh, expertise, he is the uh, graduated in 
Uh, he did his MSc in renewable energy from um, uh, energy engineering from Trivandrum University, and uh, his experience in the areas such as EV charging stations, renewable energy technology, uh, energy sources, um, including other topics. Uh, good afternoon to everyone, and uh, my name is Sagar Gemali, and uh, I am working in Nepal Electricity Authority, uh, and I am looking the project uh, electric vehicle infrastructure development project here. And uh, similarly, I'm taking another project to Smart State Light Promotion Program. Uh, I'm, I'm engaging on that project also. <clears throat> so uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, for the organizer, uh, uh, two organizers for providing this opportunity to share uh, their some views uh, regarding the current status of the charging station development in Nepal. and. Uh, how NA is thinking now to, to speed up the development in the sector. And uh, thank you, Sankarji. And uh, I would like to start up. Uh, I would like to go uh, from the current start of the power supply and demand because many things you already have uh, discussed uh, because many, uh, many I, 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 see, I have seen the uh, program outline, uh, outline and many subjects they are already discussed there. So I would like to, I would like to go to uh, showing the current situation of the Nepal. Uh, and this is the current status of the power supply and demand. And I have taken this graph from the uh, uh, load dispatch center uh, and it's from 27th October 2021. And this is the actual scenario. And nowadays we are not taking a single unit of electricity from India. Uh, and uh, and uh, total installed capacity is uh, 2,075 megawatt and among them IPP 44, uh, 1,431 megawatt is there. And from NESI it is 481. Uh, it is ROR type and storage is uh, 160 kHz first, second and third. And about 70, 57 megawatt uh, of solar is already there in our INPS. And uh, our average demand nowadays is uh, 1060 uh, megawatt. Uh, this is the average demand. And our average peak demand is about uh, 1410 megawatt. Uh, this is the average peak demand. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, now the total surplus, the average surplus is 350 megawatt. Uh, this is the surplus energy. Uh, there's a huge amount of electricity is being surplus, and then we are sending this electricity to India uh, if it is generated. Otherwise, uh, we are wasting the water in the river. Okay, and uh, like the previous slide, <clears throat> there are number of options um, um, are seen in our INPS, like this, this, this space, uh, this space where we are uh, we are consuming about only 900 megawatt of electricity. And there is a there is a possibility to charge the electric vehicle. I, this is the night time, and this is also the night time. And uh, we are sourcing for the big uh, load consumer in the especially in the night time. And uh, our ROR uh, hydropower is dominated here, and most of the IPP uh, are the ROR type, runoff river type. Uh, so how much electricity they generate that have to be consumed. So. <clears throat> And in the peak time, it's about the 14,000. And there is the option of the peak clipping also, but nowadays the uh, our total generation capacity is uh, far more than the uh, peak demand. So this is the very interesting uh, situation in Nepal. So we are in the energy surplus and uh, energy surplus about 24 hours. So, and so we are searching the big uh, load consumer, uh, especially the industries. And for the night time, we are, we are looking for uh, the um, charging station. So we are lowering the price for the charging station. And similarly, we are encouraging the um, smart street light program. The street light program also we are encouraging. And uh, induction cooking also we are, we are working. So this it is time for NAEs to charge the load. And uh, <clears throat> there are a number of uh, research are going on or uh, they have uh, the number of conclusion are there. And uh, uh, we, we, we thought that the major uh, electricity consumer that can balance our system, that means the, that can balance our system, maybe the, the charging station. And we especially targeted uh, to charge the electric vehicle as night time. So uh, <clears throat> for that, we have made a research that means the Kemiri 2020. 
and uh, this the, this is a very good uh, research one and it was the previous uh, one year before but uh, the reality is the and the lack of charging station is the major barrier to uh, to adopt the electric vehicle in nepal uh, so there are number of barriers and many barriers i think we, we have uh, overcome on that uh, but the charging lack of charging station is uh, pronouncing and in kathmandu valley you are seeing that the uh, ev penetration is very good but if you go to out of the kathmandu valley and other uh, cities and the people are not so excited in charging uh, in electric vehicles we have also seen that and any also we are purchasing electric vehicle to operate in kathmandu but we are also not uh, uh, purchasing um, in other cities or out of the valley so <clears throat> Uh, there, there was the question that uh, either charging station first or the electric vehicle first, and then uh, energy, energy ministry also looking to develop this uh, charging station. And later, NES said that yeah, so we will come in front and we will build the charging station. We'll build the public charging station. And then we took the project, and because of the uh, that uh, COVID-19 effect, it was little bit being delayed because the tender opening and other part uh, being little bit delayed. And uh, now we are, uh, it's already awarded and uh, pre construction survey is already done. And NAS planning uh, to develop the charging station in two phases. Okay. And uh, for the first phase, we are, uh, we, are, we are developing 50 numbers of the public charging stations uh, and every 100 kilometers, uh, uh, 60 to 80 kilometers. Uh, we, are, we are preparing, we are making the public charging stations. And uh, and we are covering uh, 32 cities along the East West Highway and other uh, IOS. Like uh, we are covering major IOS in Nepal, and uh, it, all of the equipment and project uh, under this phase first that is owned by the NEA. And we are not only making putting the charging station. We are preparing the whole charging ecosystem within this project, like the. Uh, payment gateway we are making, the, the CMS, central monitoring system we are making, and uh, payment method like uh, we have, uh, uh, people can use the RFID card or they can pay, every vehicle can go and they can pay by the QR code, uh, that type of uh, that type of facilities also we are, uh, we are developing uh, within this project. And, um, and more 300 charging stations will also be controlled by the same thing. That means that if of uh, uh, charging station owned by the private sector will become and they can also be demonetized um, uh, that 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 will also be monitored by our system so this is the whole system and we are putting all of the server everything now uh, within the NEA premises that means the in our data center and uh, this is the first one and in second phase uh, we are supporting the private sector it may be the home charger or uh, it may be the urban shared charger or it may be the, uh, that means the highway chargers or uh, it may be the commercial charger, uh, any private sector, they can they can cooperate with NEA. And in this model, uh, the, the public announce is already going on and then we are receiving the applications. In this model, NEA is providing the transformer if they need it. And we are providing the STLT line if they need it. We are providing the payment gateway or payment system and we are giving the access to our the CM system uh, to the, the private charging uh, station owners, and uh, they have to only buy these uh, charging station that is the charger. Uh, they have to buy and other uh, physical equipment we have provided from the NESI. And based on this model, we already started to install and uh, this charging station by the Tigu group. And we have provided the, all of the power equipment, all of the uh, STLT lines and other part we are providing and they are uh, putting this charging station and they are getting the subsidized price. Yeah, the, the very important thing is these private sectors uh, charging station, they are getting the very uh, good subsidized price uh, uh, from the NEA. That means the price will be very low, I'll show you later. So in this model, private sector and any home charger or any home platform, we are making the methodology for the uh, home charger. That is the provision that in the own building premises there there may not be the two uh, two consumers at the same place but we are we are making a methodology how to promote the ev charges so in many places like in birta mode birat nagar we already provided this type of uh, home chargers also in this model so we are inviting from all over the country from any commercial building or any hospital or any 
uh, private sector to to put the charging station uh, will 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 cooperate in the uh, power system in the payment gateway and CMS part. And then uh, <clears throat> anyone interested here also can um, uh, <coughs> give the uh, application form. An application form can be downloaded from the any website. Our own major thing that we have uh, designed here is we are providing the dedicated transformer and dedicated distribution network for the charging stations. And uh, this lesson we have uh, taken from the many in South Asia. Then we are not sharing the transformer to other consumer and we are giving the dedicated transformer to the charging station so that the fault or any other disturbance from the uh, private, uh, other consumer may not become in the charger and then its reflection will not go to, to the uh, electric cars. So <clears throat> we are also cooperating with the municipalities, the transport department, provisional government to install the charging station. Uh, and uh, provisional government, uh, they are making the refresh center and uh, we are putting the charging station there. And uh, in this model, we are working in with many municipalities like uh, Arion municipality, we are preparing charging station in the refresh center, in the five, uh, in the Lumini Providence um, uh, provisional government, they are preparing the five refresh center and we are putting the charging station. In this model, we are cooperating with uh, the uh, provisional government to, uh, to, to, to take the land, okay, to, to, to get the land. And, <clears throat> and any also preparing operating uh, modality to run charging station under private sector ownership. I already uh, described regarding this. And uh, another uh, very inter uh, interesting development is the tariff for the general charging stations in Nepal. And I think this tariff rate is the cheapest and lowest all over the country. And uh, if you put the charging station in uh, low voltage range, uh, like uh, 200, 30 uh, single phase or the three phase in single phase, then the price is 5.75 uh, rupees per unit. Uh, but the demand charge is there for 230 kVA per month. It's a very nominal. Uh, and uh, if you compare with the domestic charge, if you compare with the domestic charge, uh, the charge is uh, 10 rupees per unit. If you go more than 150 unit to 250, and it is uh, 11 rupees if you go 251 to 400, even if you go more than 400 unit and the price is 12 rupees per unit. That means uh, if you use the uh, electric vehicle, then definitely the uh, you will charge more than 400 uh, unit and then price will be more than 12 rupees per unit. And it is very, very uh, higher than the general price that we are given 5.75 rupees per unit. So the price is very uh, lucrative uh, for the charging station here. And if you take this uh, general type of charging station in 11 KB, then the price is 5.6 rupees. And if you take this from the 33 KB, and it is 5.6 rupees, uh, Nepalese rupees per unit. And uh, this is the common, common for all uh, two bill months, that means uh, all over the year. Uh, actually, there is a price difference in uh, six months, first six months, whether it is the rainy season, and uh, the price is uh, higher in the uh, winter season. And uh, this general price is the common, all um, common for the two bill months. And if you put the uh, time of the TUD meter there, and uh, in uh, 33 KB, there is the three, three range, uh, it is in the peak time, uh, at uh, night, let's see the uh, evening five to uh, evening five to two well, and it is seven rupees. And if you go in the night time, if the pure night time, that means the, in the in the night time, the price is very low. It is uh, three point seven rupees per unit, and uh, at the daytime, it is five point five rupees. And similarly, the price is winter is uh, seven rupees at the peak time, and it is five rupees in other time. So this is also very uh, low low price compared to the uh, general price. And, and if you take it from the 11 KB, it is also the similar one. That means it's a little bit uh, higher than the 33 KB and price is very low. And if you take it in 11 KB, if you if you charge your vehicle at night time, it is 4.2 rupees uh, at night. Okay, so it is very, very less price. And this is the this is the bulk price that we are given uh, given to the private sector or anyone. And this price uh, also this is the price for the NEA public charging stations also. Uh, and um, any private operator uh, uh, he or she want to operate the charging station and they can add twenty percent in this base price 
uh, and they can eat 20 percent is a is their benefit um, is their benefit and this is 20 percent is the gross margin for the private uh, charging station operators uh, the charging station operation modality is under preparation currently it can be operated by the smart uh, meter or TUD meter provided by NEA currently we are providing the TUD meter and then based on the TUD meter we are uh, take, uh, we are uh, giving the bill uh, to the private charging owner and uh, later we are making the modality and they can come in our the server system and they can pay from our QR code or they can pay from the RFID. I think the, it's, it's under construction. It may took uh, six to seven, six to nine months to complete all of this thing. And there is the, another model uh, by the ERC that you automatic swap card based tariff structures. And uh, in this structure, uh, the demand charge is not included. That is, uh, that is avoided. And uh, the price is here. And for the automatic swap card, uh, we are, we are uh, making the uh, RFID card. And based on that, any, anybody can go and charge in our public charging station. And the price is a little bit uh, cheaper for the uh, public uh, transportation. Like if Saza will become, Saza Yatat will become, price will be less. And if uh, uh, any other private sector or any car owner or other commercial uh, vehicle will come, then the price is a little bit different. And based on that, we are we are making uh, the different type of the uh, different type of the uh, charging stations. Uh, and uh, it is also the very less. I think this I think this this price is the cheapest among the world. And I would like to explain about uh, the public charging stations and the current status of the development. And uh, you can see here uh, and uh, we have uh, we have uh, three categories three categories we are we are making and uh, before uh, choosing these categories we have make a research in the market what type of the what type of vehicles are available here what type of ac charging protocol are there what type of the dc charging protocol was there and we have seen that most of the car they have the ccs2 type of charging uh, protocols in dc and uh, they have the type 2 ac type of charging protocols uh, and um, and uh, most of the car or the vehicle or bus or micros they coming from the China. They have the GBT protocols and uh, they have the AC protocol by uh, GBT AC protocols. And uh, some of the cars uh, at that time they have the uh, Tademo protocols. And uh, yeah, based on that we have we have uh, divided the number of the chargers. And e in in each of our chargers there are three guns and two guns are the DC chargers and one gun for the AC chargers. And the capacity of the single gun is 120 kilowatt. Uh, this is a liquid cooled cable, and uh, the maximum capacity of this uh, cable is 120 kilowatt. That means that if any vehicle or any bus comes with 120 kilowatt hour uh, battery capacity, then we can charge in one hour. And <clears throat> based on this, we are preparing. And in CCS type, there are two CCS guns or 60 60 kilowatt. If two car will be there, then uh, the, uh, the power will be divided uh, by 60 kilowatt and 60 kilowatt, and uh, the AC is separate. The whole uh, capacity, total capacity of the charger is 120 kilowatt, uh, and uh, and the remaining about uh, remaining 56 kilowatt, so we are thinking to uh, make the charging stations for the uh, bikes or uh, the e-rickshaw. We are we are planning for that in the major cities like. Uh, like Paris bus park in Chitan, we are thinking to develop the charging station for the Eriksa and other also in uh, the major cities. The, the remaining power, and then we are uh, providing a dedicated uh, 200 kVA transformer there. And uh, as I already said, this is the whole ecosystem for the charging station for the upcoming charging station, even by operating by the private sector. Like uh, we are providing the dedicated transformer here. And uh, charging station is there, and uh, I already said the charger type, and uh, there will be the central monitoring system, and we are we are making the server here in any data center, and there will be the mobile application, and it will be connected with the uh, Iseba or Khalti to pay the money, and uh, the information will be come in server, and then uh, then there is there, there is another RFID card also. And they can charge money from the RFID. We will provide that card from the NEA. Uh, and this is the whole ecosystem. Any any charger coming uh, after this installation, after this uh, software um, execution, and they will be connected in this software uh, software 
for uh, the CMA system, and we will monitor all of the certain station based on this, and we will collect all the money from this uh, system. And private owner also get twenty percent benefit from directly from our system. And the major uh, idea of this fifty thousand station is connecting major city to the e-vehicles. If you are going out of valley or if you are if you want to travel from one city to an, uh, another city, and there should not be any hindrance of the charging station or any hindrance of the uh, unavailability of the charging station. So we are we are we are we want to connect all of the cities with the charging station. Uh, so in every sixty to eighty kilometers, we are providing CCS type uh, fast charger and GPT type fast charger, and similar to the AC charger also there. So so in every sixty to eighty kilometer. And uh, the uh, car owner will get the charging station, and they can book the charge from any uh, any time. They can book the time, a uh, charge, uh, charging station, and they can go at that time, and they can charge. They need not to be stay there. Uh, if they they uh, they uh, could not get the time at uh, their selected time, they can go to the another charging station. So, <clears throat> and uh, yeah. Solution for charging station also for electric buses also. So uh, this is very interesting. Uh, previously we thought about to provide the charging station solution for the car that we have uh, designed for the 60 kilowatt uh, system. Later, uh, later uh, by, by by putting uh, the uh, this uh, liquid good cable and we upgraded uh, to 120 kilowatt output uh, by a single single gun. A single gun can operate 120 kilowatt output. And integrated payment gateway for all payment options, wallet, credit, debit card, and net banking, etc. are integrated. And I already said that in a central monitoring system, everything we, we are going to be. Uh, and another interesting thing is the annual maintenance contract we have provided. That means that for the five years, the contractor will, uh, the person or technician from the contractor will sit together with the uh, technical person from the NEA in the central monitoring system. We will make a uh, we'll make a central monitoring stations, and for the all 24 hours, there will be two person, one from uh, the contractor side, another from the NA side. By doing so, we want to uh, exchange the knowledge, exchange the knowledge, and anything, any disturbance or any problem come in any charger, then the service have to be provided within uh, 30, uh, 36 hours. 36 hours, the solution should be there, and we are taking the some bank guarantee. If the if the contractor will not perform that of uh, that means the annual maintenance correctly, then we will we'll cut some money from them. So for the five years we are we are, we are catching this uh, that means the contractor. So yeah, we we thought that uh, during these five years we will we will learn all of the maintenance. So uh, based on that we will we'll make this uh, this part and any time the real time data will be come in the central uh, stations and we can we can watch which car is on the and how much electricity has gone, any problem is there or not, that type of things we are uh, doing. And another is overall solution for STLT line so that we, we, we can uh, decrease the fault. Let's see the in, in uh, roadside, there may be some electrical parts to, to minimize that, we are providing the de uh, dedicated line from the uh, 11 kb line, we are taking the trunk line and uh, there will be the dedicated transform for that. <clears throat> and the current status of this project, uh, pre construction survey is uh, completed. It's not active, it's completed. We already chosen the place, and the contractor has already started to construct the product. Uh, um, it's already in uh, the construction, that means the manufacturing, and uh, material are under manufacturing. And we expect that all of the project will be completed at the end of, uh, no, no, it's uh, June 2022, I think, uh, because the project timeline is that. Next, and uh, these are the locations. Uh, these are the locations. Uh, the, the, these are the locations that we are uh, providing the charging stations here, and we are covering all over the country. And uh, every 60 to 80 kilometers, uh, there is the CCS type charging station, GPT type. Uh, minimum two guns are there currently, and we are thinking to increase the number of chargers also. Accordingly, we are cooperating the rural uh, municipalities. And we are taking the bus park, which are the modern bus park, uh, which are connected to the major highways. We are choosing that, and we are choosing the refresh center also. And uh, some time we are uh, taking the dedicated place uh, for the charging station provided by the rural uh, municipalities. And uh, we are covering whole country. That we are covering whole country. 
and at the conclusion uh, completion of the 50 charging station uh, within the targeted time is essential to each profit sector definitely and uh, we are we are preparing for making the charging station for e rickshaw and bike so that they can get the uh, the subsidized price because these uh, these uh, this type of uh, uh, vehicles are basically used by the low uh, earning people that means the low rent uh, people so we are we are we are preparing we are preparing we are designing the public charging station for uh, these small size vehicles also and uh, home charger and commercial charger needed to be connected to cma system so we are preparing on that part also so that uh, if you if you charge your uh, vehicle in at, at your own home then you have to get that lower price that you already seen we are we are giving the price uh, 3 rupees per unit also that that type of uh, charging uh, that type of tariff also need to be paid by the uh, ev owner and uh, that is another part and we are encouraging private sector uh, for the ev charge development uh, that uh, we are providing the transformer and other 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 systems uh, to them and uh, and in uh, conclusion of all of these things to speed up the sector uh, there should be the dedicated department to look after all of this e mobility e charger or uh, to to speed up the all of the uh, sector uh, thank you thank you very much uh, mr sagar gyawan sir uh, for the very informative uh, uh, presentation. It is um, very good to know that uh, Nepal Electricity Authority is taking the lead in establishment of the charging infrastructure throughout the country. And um, then also in the pipeline, there are um, more uh, charging stations and that are being uh, uh, established in the country, throughout the country. It is good to know. Thank you very much for your time and effort uh, in gathering the information and sharing in this session. Uh, with this, uh, I'd like to move to uh, the question and answer session for the, the uh, two presentations that we have just finished. So let me share with uh, the question from Alvin that, it, that goes to Ham. Um, so, so Alvin thanks Ham for the informative presentation and, and he asks that you had mentioned that the free parking policy should be temporary initiative. Can you kindly share how cities in the Netherlands are dealing with the transition to are taking Away the free parking incentives for the EV owners. Do you have advice in terms of a range of ideal durations for keeping such an incentive? Huh? Yeah. Yes, I will. Uh, I will answer that. I also answered that already to Elvin uh, in the uh, in the email. Um, the the uh, the ideal uh, duration uh, is very uh, very uh, individual uh, on the city uh, on city level uh, to be defined. Um, for example, if you look at the city in Norway, where they started already in 2009-2010 with their AV policy, they had a long time where they could offer free charging, free parking, so free electricity, uh, even for the charging. Uh, and for a long time, it was possible. Uptake, uh, until you got a certain uptake that went very quick, and then suddenly they had to uh, to uh, uh, to stop because then the pressure became too high. So uh, then they said, "Okay, now you have to start paying for your charging." Uh, the, what's logical, but the, the, as a st stimulation incentive, they did that in the begin in the early years, and they also had to say, "No, you cannot charge everywhere for free," uh, because they had they had gradual steps. For example, you could. Um, uh, as an EV, even park for free at non-charging uh, locations, just to give uh, EV uh, drivers really an advantage to say, okay, it's more difficult for you, your range is less, it's more complicated, but we have something for you. You can park everywhere in the city. So this could last quite a long time. In Amsterdam, where we where it started later, this time frame was shorter, so several of years before it was not possible anymore to give to, to have charging for free or what I said in the you could you could even apply for a charge in front of your home so that you had a dedicated parking spot in Amsterdam in the early days uh, you can only do this for a very short time because then it starts to explode um, the, in the electric mobility is, is is speeding up the uptake is speeding up all over the world uh, also Kathmandu uh, so the, the you have to look at what kind of incentives do you really need 
and how long can you really uh, uh, keep them in uh, in uh, in place? And so there is no one uh, um, uh, there's no one solution for this, uh, Alvin. You have to look at the local situation, uh, and, and in many cases you would not even like to start anymore with free parking space. But maybe in a smaller city, say okay, we don't have so much pressure. We do that here, we can start with it. So it's really depending on the case by case uh, situation. But as a ballpark figure, uh, you're not talking about 10 years anymore. You're more talking about one, two, three, maybe five years. This, I hope this answers the, uh, the question. But uh, most important is look at the complete uh, set of incentives that you can provide and look what is works best in your city and what does not annoy others too much because you don't want to to create um, uh, a divide in society where half of the society who can or more who cannot afford, uh, afford electric vehicles is getting more and more against electric mobility because others get too many advantages and they are taking away for example their parking space because then the uptake will take even lower because people get negative attitude uh, attitudes towards ev so it's a it's a fine balance uh, Alvin. Thank, thank you very much, Sam. So um, I have another question to you. So um, uh, in case of Nepal, uh, is uh, you also might have heard, uh, also heard from the previous presentation, there is need of um, coordination, coordination mechanism or dedicated institution like highlighted by Sagar Gawali. Uh, here in Nepal, is we don't have any dedicated institutional and coordination mechanism to coordinate not only for the charging infrastructure, but for, for overall EVs, uh, uh, development, uh, electric vehicle sector development. So, um, by linking linking with some um, examples or cases from other countries, do you have any suggestions for Nepal, or um, uh, uh, like for coordination me me mechanism for establishing uh, a dedicated institutional mechanism like that? If you you can share any cases from other countries, that might help. Thank you. So the question is, there is no uh, national coherent uh, policy uh, in the system. Uh, and, and you ask for what kind of uh, examples there are from other regions, uh, uh, how you could establish this or how you could uh, uh, come to, despite this policy, to uh, the EV uh, uptake. Is that correct? Is that yeah. more or less? Yeah. 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 It, so first is uh, from, from the, the talks with, uh, with, with Ritu and with uh, Bosan. And it's indeed clear that this is a topic for cities to, uh, to, uh, to struggle uh, with. Um, first, let's, let's assume that there's no country policy that's very uh, helpful. That, uh, that, that's, that's happening in more countries. Then the city level can via its concessions do a lot. So what we see, uh, of course, a city can also, when there is not enough budget and uh, 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 spending possibilities, you can also do incentives in the form of, uh, of subsidies, uh, of EVs. And, uh, but normally this is, this is more difficult for cities. So normally the uh, solutions are more on things that you can actually influence locally. And that is uh, uh, parking, charging locations, preferences like uh, closing down some zones in the city for other vehicles, uh, uh, solution in, in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam, where they where they want to speed up with, with trucks, for example, electric trucks uh, and uses. And they said, what can we do? And they said, okay, electric uh, the truck can, outside the normal time window, where a vehicle can go into this street or city or, or region in this city, neighborhood, they can go outside because they're more silent. Or, they can do when they have to unload their vehicle, they are allowed to, to do a little bit of, uh, of parking on the uh, pedestrian areas as a just as a first appetizer, because you cannot do that for many years. You can only do that in the early time. Yeah? Early. So these are things that you can do. You can close down zones. Uh, you can say taxis are only allowed here when they are electric. So that's also a big driver. So you have to look at what kind of things can I do to circumvent that's not a national policy. And really, uh, money is one thing, so national uh, money on incentives. But the most important driver are these, uh, these, uh, these uh, privile privileges for EV drivers. Uh, also, going into the city, if you have a, 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 a drive lane only for electric, uh, you are quicker at work or at home or whatever, that's important. But it's much more important that you can say, hey, 
I'm being seen as being clean and not a spoiling environment. So I, I'm allowed to drive on this special privileged uh, and, uh, drive lane, the outside, the, 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 the road, uh, what is it? Yes, and the lane in the uh, outside the city. Uh, I can go on the bus lane. So that's where the only the public uh, only public transport is. These are most more important than money uh, in the early time, early days. National policy, uh, yeah, um, we have done really a lot with uh, the uh, with the European Commission, with the countries on policies, on what works, and what kind of in incentives are really effective. Um, how can you stimulate the consumer market or the business market? Can you steer uh, funding towards certain uh, the vehicle type category? So uh, maybe you as a country, you don't feel very uh, comfortable by incentivizing a large vehicles like Tesla Model S or whatever. But you know, I want to incentivize the, the smaller vehicles or, for example, even I want to incentivize the really A-segment uh, vehicles or even the light electric vehicles, the scooters. So there's a lot of the, uh, and the buttons where you can turn uh, to, uh, to, to reach those uh, areas. Um, yeah, uh, happy to go to, to go more in detail about that, but I think it's too much to go to, uh, into all the different, uh, different uh, yeah. Yeah. EV stimulation policies. But the effectiveness beforehand, just one example, the Netherlands started with a, with a business-oriented uh, incentive policy or companies and they targeted both plug-in hybrids and uh, full electric uh, let's say back in 2011 till 2014 or something and the consequence was uh, was that there were a lot of plug-in hybrids uh, being bought by companies for their drivers their employees so the people with the company car uh, and those cars were never charged because there was no incentive so the incentive in the early days targeted the wrong group. Uh, this was quickly corrected and uh, it's, it's now not, no longer in, in, in place. So that's fine. You have to learn and you have to stumble and you find new ways. Uh, but be thinking ahead of what do you want to target and reach is very important. Thank you very much, uh, Ham, uh, for your uh, uh, answer for this, my question. And uh, uh, as you informed, uh, you have uh, another meeting uh, uh, very soon. So. Uh, uh, on behalf of Solution Plus team, I would like to thank you for your time and for the presentation that uh, you delivered in the program. Thank you very much. It was really nice to have you uh, on board for this uh, training session. Uh, thank you very much, Ham. So now, uh, now I will. Uh, uh, thank, thank you uh, also for, uh, for having me in the uh, in the uh, in the training. And uh, so I will switch off because then I will go to the other uh, activ the other activities. That's fine. So I don't need to stay. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Since you have another meeting, you may leave yes. now. Um, thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. So now uh, uh, I'll uh, move uh, to another question to another speaker. Sagar sir, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, since there are a um, couple of questions to you, but uh, we are quite running out of time. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start from question from Gaurav uh, Raj Pandey, sir. Uh, so there is a question by when you are planning to deploy the charging station you uh, can you love it uh, and the question from Gaur Pras Pandey. Uh, excuse me sir by when yeah yeah since um, NEA has already started uh, 50 charging yes, stations no 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 we, we, we have not uh, established it's under construction uh, okay it's under construction and the SDLT oh. line is uh, being, uh, being started to construct and then the charger and the plasma they are and under manufacturing. So we'll, I think we will complete this project within six to eight months uh, if any uh, disturbance or inherence will not, will not be there. Uh, this is the 50 charging station. Regarding other the private charging stations, we are promoting and we have each already started and many uh, number of chargers already has uh, installed. Like uh, I think uh, there is a presentation from Digo Group. They have also installed the charger in the same basis uh, in uh, Sinduli and Kurinda. And number of uh, the chargers they have uh, installed in Biratnagar and Bitamar also. So we are promoting this and we are taking the application for this. And you can uh, take the application from website and uh, you can put the application. So uh, it's an it's it's ongoing process. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Another question uh, uh, What is the provision to standardize the charging stations where anyone can go and charge? Yes, you mentioned in your PPT. 
Oh, no, there is not any provision. You can just go and the yes, the, the charging is the charger should have the open charging point protocol. Uh, that that should be there. And any private uh, uh, charging station, they have this provision, and it has to be communicated with the server system. So there is no other anything, and you have to download the, that app, and then you, you should have the QR code, or you have to purchase the RFID card from EMI. Okay. So you, have, you have to put money on that RFID card, and this is the port postpaid system in RFID, and it's a prepaid in the QR code system. Okay, and uh, yeah, it, so, it does so, not mean so, so let me take one more question uh, from Sam Sundar Sapkota sir, uh, who is uh, representing Bangladesh Province Government, uh, the Transport Operation uh, Management um, uh, Office. So his question is: Is NEA an authorized government agency to centralize charger, or NEA will play? is a, one of the organization in the electric vehicle ecosystem. If any is separately planning to establish charging station in different location, why it was not coordinated with provincial government? Why I am saying is like you said, you will have charging station at Paris Bus Park, but for the same location, PTOMB has already made agreement with Bharatpur Metropolitan City to establish charging station. So I think, uh, we, is there is kind of oh, coordination. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we uh, I think uh, the Sundar TV, I think he's representing, where is he representing? I'm seeing some rude question here. So <clears throat> we have made that agreement before they have done uh, in the Paras was far. So it is not like that we are not coordinating or something like that. We are only putting the own charging station there, there will be the three gone, and then provisional government also can put their charger there. Or I think they are processing some uh, buses there, and they may have planning for that. So it is not a thing that the single charging station will provide all of the solution or something like that. So we have uh, made the agreement with the Bharatpur municipality only before. So it is not part that we are checking uh, someone or or something like that. At the starting, what happened? Uh, there was the hindrance that who will uh, make the charging station. And uh, the Nepal government uh, has given that tax to us. And it is not that Sagar Gyanwali wanted to put charging station and he took the project. And it is not the case. It is the case that Nepal government chose the NEA. Uh, NEA has given this work to the, our department. We are doing that. So it is not the individual work, it's the government work. So you have to ask this question to uh, that municipality, Bharat Municipality, either or the Nepal government, energy ministry, you can directly ask. Okay, thank you very much, Sagar, sir. Yeah, in, during the the first session of this training, just uh, today, uh, today before, um, uh, just two days before today, um, there were representative from provincial government, representative from local government, and representative from the federal government. And what uh, we agreed is that there is lack of coordination um, in from the aspect of overall ecosystem, not only the charging infrastructure or vehicle conversion like that, overall coordination. So. Um, it seems like them. Um, um, although you were not there in the in the first session, it seems like we need to strengthen the coordination, establish a coordination mechanism like that. Uh, it seems um, uh, like that. So, uh, uh, um, yeah, that is my opinion. And uh, just uh, since we are running already out of time uh, by around ten minutes, uh, we need to uh, take. We we need to continue. However, uh, one last question to Sagar, sir. Uh, is there any st standard or guideline uh, that is being formulated by the ENEA uh, regarding the establishment and operation of the charging stations sir, in the new, near future? Yes, or? yes sir. Uh, yeah, we are working on that model. And this is, this is the very uh, first solution. It is not the final solution. We are, we are seeing the vehicles in the market. And we, are, we, we, we talk with, we sit with the major manufacturer or the importer. And based on that, we have designed the best solution for that. And we have for this, we, we talk with some of our consultants also. So we think that the preliminary this solution will be over. And this is not the final. And later, uh, uh, beside that 50 chargers, definitely uh, there should be number of, uh, more number of chargers. And uh, for that, we'll, 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 we'll make uh, some more studies. And government may think differently, or uh, they may provide that uh, tax to NEA or not. So uh, uh, I can tell what happening for the two projects. One is for the 50 chargers and another for the, that means the 500 chargers for the private owners. And for this, I can say for the other government planning, I cannot say that. Okay. 
Thank you very much for your answers. And now, before jumping to the next presentation, let, uh, let us um, um, proceed ahead and, and, uh, and uh, do a quick slide. Uh, Nas, can we go for slide now? Yeah. So like we did uh, in the beginning of the session, now um, uh, I'm requesting to answer the slide question. It, so the, the, the reason that the lack of standard and guidelines uh, for starting of the, in operation of charging station is dominating. Now we will be moving ahead for another presentation uh, from uh, Mr. Bharat Sapkota. He will be presenting us on development of charging infrastructure in Nepal. Mr. Bharat Sapkota is currently working to develop a, an economical and conventional EV charging network. And he is um, uh, graduated in ele electronics engineering and has more than eight years of experience in this sector. Uh, and he has also worked um, uh, with Digo in the past as a chief technical advisor. Uh, and he has also uh, been, he has also contributed in the establishment of different charging uh, stations uh, here in Nepal. So, Mr. Sapota, the fro floor is yours, please. Thank you. I'm Bharat Sapota. Currently, I'm working in Green Wall Solar. Uh, here, I'm going to explain about the development of charging infrastructure in Nepal. Charging infrastructure is a combination of power grid, charger module, and um, also the operation of the system. Uh, charging, um, there are, uh, charger can be classified into two types. One is onboard charger and next, next is offboard charger. Onboard charger supports up to 32 amp single phase electricity. Um, most of the cars are uh, equipped with onboard charger. And BYD uh, have onboard char charger that support up to uh, um, 42 kilowatt AC and it supports three phase. Rest of the rest of all the chargers support uh, um, single phase uh, as a input. And offboard charger are DC chargers. And we are going to uh, explain and um, about these offboard chargers because uh, charging station are made up of offboard chargers. Mm -hmm. A different type of uh, here I have mentioned different type of uh, DC chargers. The in the in the beginning, Chardeme was the uh, DC charger, and uh, later Chardeme become obsolete. And combined charging system and GBT are becoming more popular in our country. Here I'm showing. Uh, some of our works that we have done in the past time. Uh, we have installed uh, type 2 AC charger in Lumini Development Trust. Trust. This was the first charger that was installed in that place. And we have installed another charger in uh, Kuvel Air Store. That, were, that is on the Prithibi Highway and at Tonau. And the next one is uh, at Ministry of Forest, Environment and Soil Conservation, that is in Kandagi Province. And these are the fast charging standard used in Nepal. Uh, uh, Chodemo, I already said that Chodemo was in practice in the past time. And Kia Soul EV may be the only electric vehicle that support Chodemo in case of our country. And um, CCS2 is another and GVT. Uh, here I'm going to explain the technical aspect. Technical aspect. Uh, NEA. NEA is the only electricity provider in our country. Being only electricity provider, NEA, NEA must, all of the projects are fully dependent on NEA because uh, we cannot generate electricity. We can only borrow electricity uh, from NEA and uh, that is used to charge the vehicles or, to, or that is used to complete our project. The other thing is uh, EV charger, type of EV charger and compatibility. Um, there are different type of EV chargers. Um, I mean, uh, the charging protocol that is used. Uh, I already told that some are Chademo, some are CCS and some are GBT. And one charging standard is not compatible to other vehicle. Some, some vehicle are equipped with CCS charging protocol and some with GBT. And uh, 
because of those um, technical of, um, we, people face some problem due to these technical standards and other is the team of technical expert. Uh, there are uh, very less people who are well trained uh, for the installation, operation, and even designing of the charging station. And the next one is operation and maintenance. The operation and maintenance is not the bigger issue in this time, but in the future, operation and maintenance will be the big issue because I already told that there are very less technical expert. Uh, this is because uh, electric vehicle are evolving in our country uh, uh, with very less time. And uh, so that operation and maintenance is not uh, is not very good in our in our case. And the next one is networking and networking for the user convenience. If all the vehicles should be connected in the in the network, maybe within the form of mobile application or some other form, so that uh, individual vehicle user can be can be informed uh, with that uh, with the status of the charging station, and he can decide whether to charge in that station or uh, select the next charging destination, uh, and. These, these, these are to be developed in, in case of our country. And challenges. Um, there are some challenges we have faced uh, during the installation of the charging station and uh, some are predicted uh, with our experience. The, the major challenge we faced from the NES side is quality of the grid voltage and consistency of power supply from the national grid. Uh, when we choose, uh, when we choose, we choose to reduce the cost of installation of the system and cost of the project, then uh, we should eliminate the inst installation of transformer and uh, some distribution uh, network. In that point, NEA will provide 400 volt electricity that is uh, that is provided to other other factories and other customer also. Uh, Definitely, charging station need very uh, consistent and uh, consistent uh, power. But sometimes so we cannot get consistent and quality power. In that case, um, we have to offset with the quality. And because of that, some EV charging station are facing are facing some uh, problem of uh, charging at very low speed as compared to the estimated time. And if we choose, uh, if we choose the quality, quality grid, then we have to go, we have to, we have, we need to install additional transformer and distribution line that will increase the cost. And if cost is increased, I'm talking from the private sector side, and if cost is increased and that will impact the uh, project cost and and the project, if project cost is increased, then that the direct impact will be on return on investment. And the next one, next the next challenge is diverse charging standard. Uh, as I already mentioned, Digo is uh, following GBT standard, and they have installed various GBT type uh, charging station, and they are going to install the same in other places too. And the vehicle that that are imported by Digo can support that charging, but other vehicles such as Kia, Nero, Hyundai, MG, BYD, Tata, and other uh, electric vehicles that are manufactured manufactured and imported from India, they will not support GBT. They will only support CCS. And in that case, GBT will not be uh, benefited by the charging station that that support CCS, but uh, most of the car companies, branded car companies, uh, they will not be benefited by the charging station that are installed from Digo. And uh, Chodemo was installed by Kia, Chodemo was uh, followed by Kia Soul, uh, but now Kia Soul, uh, maybe Chodemo will not be uh, um, installed in other electric cars, but I think GBT and CCS will be uh, will be two type of charging standard and 
uh, they, they, there will not be benefit from each other and that will be the challenge for in the coming future because we are not for, we are we are not following the single charging standard even nepal is very small country but we are not following this and the the, the next challenge is availability availability of well trained human resources for the installation maintenance and even in operation if we go to the uh, smart uh, operation system such as uh, networking uh, and development of uh, mobile application in all the sectors in in private sector and we should connect this networking to private sector uh, to the charging station that are maintained by even public sector and even private sector if we do not do this then we will there, there will be lots of chaos so that we will face lots of problem and uh, the the next problem is availability of well trained human resources because i think uh, only ev importers are uh, giving the training of uh, electric vehicle maintenance diagnosis of electric vehicle but nobody is focused in the uh, training of electric vehicle charging station charger i, I think the people have very less knowledge when compared to the electric vehicles very less knowledge of charging station when compared when compared to the knowledge of electric vehicles so that in the future there will there will be some uh, problem due to that uh, due to that and the next challenge is cost of the project versus return on investment i have uh, i have heard that nea is going to charge um, additional nea is given permission to charge additional 20% of the electricity cost uh, to the customer by by charging station or not but i think the return on investment will be very long time or um, the investor will not get any profit uh, with that pro with that margin because uh, if we consider electric vehicle charging charging station as a business then uh, investment is far far more higher when compared to the profit mm, and the needs uh, as nea is the only provider of electricity uh, they should be clear about their roles and responsibilities uh, some roles and responsibilities are consistent tariff rate and subsidy sometimes um, the customer needs subsidy because uh, even in in today's case uh, we have installed some charging station in some places but there are some charging station where the, the electric vehicle user never approach the charging station because uh, and uh, the, the vehicle user never reach to their charging station but the charging station owner is paying the bill of electricity the minimum uh, minimum rate of electricity even they are not using that charging station and i think sometime people need subsidy in in those cases and and any also need to, to collect the data of whether the charging station is necessary or not there are lots of people they need to install charging station and they need to get uh, the subsidy from nea but um, there are some location where charging station could be mandatory but the proper data collection will help whether to install the charging charging station in that place or not and the next one is the implementation of vehicle to grid vehicle to grid is for efficiency stability and reliability of national grid power grid and uh, this concept actually helps to stabilize the grid when there is too much load and uh, this concept helps to charge the vehicle when there is surplus electricity uh, in power grid side uh, but um, any should have the policy as early as possible to implement this is not mandatory but this is the very good option if any want to coordinate with private sector uh, to uh, stabilize uh, to provide the electricity for the charging station and uh, this will also help to stabilize the nea uh, power grid uh, stabilize the voltage of the power grid in, in this case the energy from the vehicle will be fed to the grid when grid voltage is unstable or grid voltage tends to reduce and the next the next need is to installation and operation of charger by ev importers or sellers uh, 
there are lots of dealers uh, of the importer. Um, uh, there are maybe all the electric vehicle importer, all the vehicle importer have uh, importer have their dealer in major cities of Nepal. If they tend to install the charging station in their service center, then they can easily install. And the installation cost, even the project cost will be reduced because they already have the infrastructure. They do not need to add any infrastructure. They only need to add the charging station and infrastructure that is related to power grid. And in that case, the operation and maintenance will be even easier when compared to other third, part, third parties who are willing to do the business of charging station. In this case, if uh, EV importers uh, are focused to install the charging station in their service center, then that will be far more easier to promote the electric vehicles and even to operation, even the operation and maintenance of the charging station will be more easier. And the, the, I already told that networking of all charging station is very much mandatory because uh, if we do not uh, uh, do this, there will be uh, very chaotic in the coming future because uh, if we do not go to the networking then uh, even user do not have any idea how to charge the vehicle and even uh, the charging station or owner will not have the idea when the customer will come and they will uh, occupy their charging station charging station should be occupied for more than half hour to more than half hour in that case, um, the networking is mandatory. I think this is very much important for the smooth operation of the charging station. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you very much, Bharat Ji, for uh, your brief presentation. In your presentation, you have nicely highlighted about the technical aspect and the challenges and the needs with the brief exp explanation linking them with your experience. Thank you very much. Uh, to all the audience in the session, if you have any questions to Bharatji, please uh, share them via chat box. Uh, maybe we'll be able to uh, discuss uh, on the questions later if uh, the time permits or Bharatji can respond them via the chat box. Thank you very much. Now, now let us proceed um, right for, uh, with another presentation uh, from Mr. Mukunda uh, Bikram Saha. He will be explaining about the uh, charging infrastructure development in Nepal and then is Digo has uh, is being working to establish different charging infrastructure. Uh, he will be explaining it linking with um, it with, with their experience. Uh, talking about Mr. Mukunda Bikram Sa, he is currently working with the Digo in the capacity of business development manager and uh, electronics and communication engineer. And he is an MBA by qualification. He is with the Digo for last five years and he is involved in the various EV and EV charging st uh, station project with the DIGO. Uh, with this, uh, let me invite uh, Mukunda ji to uh, deliver his presentation in the session. Mukunda ji, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Mukunda Sa, Mukunda Vikram Sa, and I'm working for uh, DIGO uh, as a uh, business development manager here. And uh, it's been more than five years I'm uh, with Digo and uh, uh, as a Digo and in a, as a company, uh, we've been working in a uh, various uh, EV and uh, EV related projects. Uh, traditionally, uh, before we ventured into the EV, uh, we've been working uh, in uh, various technological things, uh, gadgets, uh, and likewise in, in a renewable energy sector as well. Uh, so uh, in a today presentation, uh, I'd like to present some uh, case examples in Nepal about the charging station. So uh, we as a company also actively uh, been uh, uh, involved in the installation of a charger and promotion of EV and a charger itself. Uh, so I would like to present a few case examples, uh, our own uh, stories uh, in my presentation. Uh, okay, I'll uh, start. Uh, so before uh, I really get on to my presentation, uh, I would like to uh, spend a few time uh, explaining about our company. Uh, Digo, uh, we are like a group of companies. Uh, we have a different company inside uh, Digo. Uh, and basically, our mission and vision is uh, is the promotion uh, of EV, uh, promotion of a 
uh, zero emission vehicles, uh, likewise uh, sustainable uh, infrastructures uh, and innovative ideas. And uh, our vision, uh, we are vision to, uh, to make Nepal uh, our country or our living place, a sustainable place to live uh, and, uh, and a proper place and, <clears throat> and the place one where our offspring, our next generation can uh, live. Uh, or maybe we can say we can give them a proper environment to live. So as a company, uh, uh, in a digo, what we have uh, done is we are into a various, uh, uh, various aspects of electric vehicles and, and its system. And uh, we try to create an ecosystem uh, because it's uh, not only the electric vehicles, uh, the related service and the associated uh, services uh, related to the electric vehicles that makes the whole concept of electric vehicle successful. Uh, for that, uh, what we have created or what we try to create, uh, what we try to uh, do, uh, uh, are like after sales service of electric vehicles and training and development uh, regarding the electric vehicles, training and development to our staffs, to the uh, to the people who are willing to uh, willing to learn more about EV, uh, development of a charging facilities. Uh, we are also into a retrofitting. Uh, we have we have have done a few uh, projects regarding the retrofitting as well, and we operate the fleet service and. Uh, uh, I would like to I would like to say that all of our this ecosystem is based on electric vehicles and and our periphery of that. So even the fleet service uh, that we are providing is a, uh, is also uh, from a EV and uh, we 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 support on a financing uh, aspects uh, to our customers. We are also into the battery assembly. Uh, the the retrofitting projects uh, that we did and the battery requirement for the retrofitting project. The uh, although we cannot manufacture the cell itself here, we have to import the cells, uh, battery cells. Uh, uh, but the rest of the assembly and uh, the battery pack uh, was made by our uh, in-house uh, capabilities here. And we are also uh, thinking uh, about the battery reuse, recycle, disposal, how it can be uh, managed properly. So we are all into this uh, business. Uh, uh, in in few in, in few aspects we are a little bit ahead and few uh, aspects uh, we are still on an R and D phase. So all of this uh, we think uh, the whole ecosystem uh, is very very important for the whole success of electric vehicles in Nepal. So uh, before before I start uh, to present the case, I would like uh, just to recall what. Uh, what is EV and how does it EV works? Uh, so uh, it's just uh, electric vehicles uh, are those vehicles which are powered by uh, EV, similar to uh, similar to the IC vehicles or the petrol diesel vehicles. Uh, the source of uh, fuel for it uh, is the energy storage in the battery, and uh, which powers the uh, electric motor uh, or the propulsion system, and that's how the uh, vehicle runs. So uh, next uh, slide is about the EV charging station. So similar to analogous to the uh, fueling station or the petrol uh, gasoline station, uh, it's uh, it's the fueling station for the electric vehicles. And uh, uh, so whenever the SOC of the electric vehicles are low or uh, during the travel, during the journey, whenever it's low, uh, it's a basic concept that you go to EV charging stations uh, Get your vehicles recharged and uh, and continue your journey. So uh, in the in the EV charging stations, the uh, few things that are present are like the EV charging equipments uh, that uh, our, uh, our previous uh, previous presenters also they talk uh, that uh, there are like various uh, type and uh, various standards of the charging equipments uh, and and. Uh, so there is there is a uh, it differs uh, from brand to brand, manufacturer to manufacturer. Uh, so uh, basically, a car owner or the vehicle owner, they just go to the charging station, uh, which is compatible to their own uh, own standard of the charging uh, present in their vehicles. So that's how you charge. And uh, charging is uh, charging station or the charging infrastructure, I should say. 
uh, is like a very, very important part uh, for the whole electric vehicle ecosystem. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a driving force behind the uh, acceptance level and the adoption level of the electric vehicle. Uh, without the charging infrastructure, uh, I guess uh, the successful rollout of the electric vehicle or the increasing the acceptance of electric vehicle, uh, the, the chances are quite low, or I should say it won't happen. So it's it's very uh, essential component for the success of the EV. And the one thing you associate uh, with the EV or the EV on is the range anxiety. Uh, so uh, as per our experience, since uh, we are also into the uh, sales and distribution of the EV, so the basic and uh, one of the first questions uh, that we hear from our prospective clients uh, who come to inquire for the uh, EVs, uh, it's like, uh, how far will uh, it go? What's the range? And uh, for example, this, uh, basically we are based in Kathmandu and, uh, and uh, whoever comes uh, to inquire for our vehicles, they just ask, uh, will my vehicle, uh, because I'm not from Kathmandu or if I want to travel uh, outside of Kathmandu, will my vehicle uh, take me to Pokhara or Narendra or maybe uh, Biratnagar? So if I buy this vehicle, can I travel to there? And uh, at the moment, uh, at the moment, the scenario is like reluctantly, sometimes we have to say, uh, maybe that's not possible. So the charging facility uh, is, is, is like a basic, basic for the adoption of a, or the acceptance of a EV. So uh, at present, uh, I should say the, uh, the state of the uh, charging infrastructure uh, in Nepal is like we are in a very, very initial, in the beginning uh, stage uh, still. Uh, so there are like a, uh, there are like uh, a lot of uh, uh, companies. There are like a lot of brands uh, that been working in in an EV and they are trying to make their own charging station. So it's like uh, it's like uh, we are in a very uh, initial stage. So uh, on moving forward, uh, I would like to I would like to uh, present one slide uh, regarding the. Uh, EVs in Nepal. Uh, so traditionally, uh, there were like a, a few years back uh, when we talk about the EV, uh, we could talk about like uh, Sofa Tempo. And if we go a uh, little bit uh, in the past, uh, there were like a trolley bus, uh, trolley buses uh, operating in Kathmandu. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we could not continue that. I mean, a uh, few years back, maybe 30, 40 years back, we had like a trolley bus system that was like a, one of the uh, technology in the electric field, but uh, due to various circumstances and a uh, very situation, we could not continue that. And I think that's one of the misfortune, unfortunate uh, for us, uh, for Nepal. But at the present, uh, there are like a two wheeler uh, that's been uh, rolling out. There are like a three wheeler electric, uh, what we call like the auto, uh, I mean, three-wheeler electric rigs uh, that are like, a, that's been running in the Karai region. There are like a tempos, suffer tempos, and there are like a hatchback cars, passenger cars. And uh, sometime, uh, because uh, the, right now, the most popular category of electric vehicle is like a passenger cars uh, or the private electric vehicles. But uh, uh, we, tend to, uh, we tend to forget or we tend to realize that in Nepal, there are like a lot of commercial vehicles that has been imported and that has been already running as well. So even there are like buses running, even there are like pickups, even there are like a, a 11 seaters, 20 seaters micro bus uh, that's also been commercially operating uh, in Nepal as well. So uh, I'd like to go now, what kind of charging stations are present in Nepal? So here I have uh, put two indicative, uh, indicative examples of the charging stations that, uh, that are present. Although these were installed like uh, quite a while back, uh, but these are the charging stations that were installed. Maybe uh, that's why I, I, I said that we are in a little bit uh, beginning stage of the charging station revolution or electric vehicle revolution as, uh, uh, as well. So these were the charging stations that was installed by uh, BYD in any year premises. And the other, other one uh, was installed by Sundar Yatea to operate their own, to charge their own uh, fleet of electric bus. And uh, this charger was installed by a Kia. And uh, uh, our uh, 
uh, last presenter, Mr. Bharat, I think uh, he was uh, rightly involved in this project uh, to install and test this charger. So uh, if, we look, if we look at the scenario right now, uh, what we can see is most of the charger that's been installed, uh, they are uh, installed by the uh, private companies or by the uh, automobile uh, companies uh, and who uh, they are uh, increasing just because to uh, increase their presence and to uh, increase their market presence, to increase their market share uh, and to gain a trust uh, and a confidence among the potential buyer. And they are aggressively looking to uh, looking to install these chargers uh, in their showrooms, in their uh, workshops, along the highways. Uh, but uh, one drawback or one limitation, I, uh, I should say limitation, not the drawback. Uh, the limitation with these chargers is that uh, they they prioritize their own uh, own customers or they uh, or their own customers or the chargers uh, basically who use that standard only. So uh, I should say it's not all inclusive uh, kind of installation or it's not all in inclusive type of infrastructure. So uh, one charger, it doesn't matter the need for all the all the electric vehicle uh, that uh, pass through the route uh, where it's installed. And uh, there are also a lot of uh, chargers. Uh, there are uh, also the chargers that been uh, installed by the local bodies, uh, Sagar had previously said by the municipalities, uh, road development boards, uh, different organizations locally, and also by the supermarkets, hotels. So uh, basically, uh, it's like that. Uh, and uh, the more and more the EV owners, uh, the EV buyers are growing, uh, what we face, uh, what we are experiencing is the interest in the home EV chargers. Uh, among the homeowners, it's also growing. So a lot of uh, people, a uh, lot of uh, EV owners who own the EV chargers, uh, basically what they get with their uh, with their EV uh, are like a generic chargers uh, that uh, charge with a very low capacity. So they are looking to install like a uh, like a cost effective chargers in their home uh, that can charge the their vehicles in a little bit more faster rate. So this kind of chargers, uh, it's also the interest uh, it's gaining uh, among the EV owners. And there is another type of, uh, I mean, the uh, charging facility present, which is basically for the sofa tempo. And uh, when we talk about the charging station, I think we tend to forget these uh, kind of facilities are also present in Nepal that caters the need of a uh, sofa tempo. And, uh, uh, talking about the bigger picture uh, or the bigger scale, uh, we should uh, mention about the uh, NEA, the charging station project of NEA. And uh, Sagar, sir, uh, previously, uh, he had spent a lot of time explaining about this uh, project. So I would just like to uh, say that uh, the charging station, uh, 50 charging station, uh, uh, is been on a pipeline, uh, is been. Uh, has been plan of electric uh, Nepal Electricity Authority NEA to be installed, and the uh, the agreement is be, uh, is already done between NEA and the Chinese company, uh, Chinese manufacturer. Uh, it's like a one year completion time, and the works are really on their way. Uh, development uh, uh, of the project is there, and uh, basically we uh, as Digo represent uh, the Chinese company as their local partner here, so it's also associated with us. So giving a little bit brief over the charging station that's been installed by uh, the NEA, uh, it's like a 50 chargers across the nation, uh, each with a capacity of 142 kilowatt. Basically, there are three guns. Uh, in, a, uh, in a picture, in the image, uh, in the side, you can see an uh, indicative image how this charger might look, but the uh, actual product that uh, uh, when you get the final installation might uh, differ uh, by a bit, but this is an indicative image we can see. Uh, it's with the three guns. Uh, there are like a two DC fast charging guns and one AC uh, charging fast charging gun. Uh, the DC is with the 60 kilowatt each, and the uh, one is with the 22 kilowatt. Uh, there are like a three different configuration of a charger that's been installed uh, with uh, each with a different uh, numbers, is uh, different quantity, and uh, these are like uh, one configuration is like uh, with uh, two CCS gun. Uh, in uh, AC type 2, either is like a CCS and a Tarimo combined, and AC, uh, AC type 2, and another is like a 2 GBT guns with uh, GBT AC uh, type of charger. 
uh, basically uh, this charger is intended to capture uh, the private passenger EV and also the commercial EVs as well. So, and uh, another uh, good initiative by uh, Nepal Electricity Authority, NEA again, is that like they have a plan for a 50 EV charging, uh, sorry, 500 EV charging station throughout the nation as well. Uh, the, they have already opened the application from interested party and they intend this uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the private sector as well, the interested sector. Uh, and, uh, they have they have uh, outlined their plan uh, to support uh, the private sector for this installation with the uh, required infrastructure required requirement with the policies and with the uh, tariff rate subsidized tariff rate and all the support they can give from any uh, and uh, another uh, charging station project maybe that goes a little bit under the radar is uh, about the Saza Yataya so it's been like uh, I start of the October uh, that the agreement has taken place between uh, Saza and uh, CSTC Pinwin, uh, Chinese post manufacturer company. Uh, although when we talk about this project, uh, most of the time uh, we talk about the electric bus uh, only, uh, which is like a 40 unit of electric bus, but we tend to forget uh, there is like a 20 DC fast charger uh, been installed uh, along with this project as well. So it's also like a, one of the uh, biggest charging network uh, ever operated by any bus company or the bus operator in Nepal. So it, it, it is also a kind of a large uh, project considering the state of the uh, charging station uh, infrastructure uh, in, uh, in Nepal at the moment. So uh, the, the charger uh, installed here will be capable of charging all the bus within the, within the five hours. And uh, as per the plan of Saza, they are planning to charge at the bus uh, probably in the night time. And uh, similar kind of projects uh, with bus, uh, including chargers and queue with bus and the charger separate are also been planned by the provincial government, metropolitan cities. Uh, there are a lot of interest uh, after the Saza has successfully completed uh, this, uh, uh, the, I mean, the uh, agreement signing of this, uh, of this tender. So there are a lot of other uh, uh, government, uh, provincial government, and metropolitan cities who are interested in it. Uh, maybe uh, we can expect uh, Bagmati province uh, also uh, to come up with a similar kind of uh, similar kind of project in the near future. So I think uh, these are like a quite encouraging, encouraging sign uh, for the uh, EV and the EV uh, charging infrastructure for Nepal. So even uh, for this project, we are the local partner working with Saza and the uh, Chinese bus manufacturing company. And there is also another charging station, uh, but it's like uh, uh, like a quite sad to hear uh, from a different news that it's currently uh, has not come up uh, in operation. It's like a charging stations uh, of the charging facilities that have been installed in Alumini. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a part of a bigger project uh, with the with the, with the electric bus and electric uh, taxis uh, by Lumini Development Trust. But uh, even here, there are also the few chargers installed for the uh, charging of a uh, bus and a charger. And so uh, uh, these were the uh, the previous slides were of the uh, the. Uh, of the chargers that were installed by uh, that were by the NEA by the private levels. Now I would like to talk a little bit about uh, what we have uh, Digo uh, as a company have done uh, in the field of uh, EV charging stations and infrastructures. So uh, we do not uh, we uh, do not claim, but I think uh, we believe that we were the one of the first company to import and test uh, EV uh, DC fast charger and. Uh, uh, and my uh, my colleague and a friend Bharat uh, Bharati who was like involved in uh, testing of this project as well. So uh, I think we were we were one of the first company to import and test it. And uh, uh, the charger we imported and tested was like of a sixty kilowatt total capacity, and it had like a uh, six modules piece of capacity ten kilowatt. Uh, so we could uh, we could uh, uh, I mean 
uh, customize the uh, capacity of the charger. I think we tested the charger uh, in around 30 kilowatt uh, output. So this charger where was of the Chardemo standard. And uh, uh, at present, if we talk about present, uh, we have recently uh, installed a charger uh, in a moon port. Uh, it's along the uh, BP highway. Uh, it's approximately 90 kilometers from Kathmandu uh, towards Sinduli, and it's like uh, 22 kilometers from Kurkot towards, uh, towards uh, Kathmandu. And uh, uh, for, for the development of a charging uh, infrastructures, uh, we have, we have uh, named these projects uh, as a charge point. So whenever uh, in the future uh, we are planning to uh, install more of this kind of a chargers, uh, in different places. If you if you see uh, the, any name called a charge point, then that would be installed by us. So a uh, little bit technical detail about this uh, about this charger installed here. It's like a DC fast charger. Uh, this charger is uh, the total capacity is up to 120 kilowatt, uh, and the minimum it can operate from a 30 kilowatt. Uh, there are like a four modules uh, each of 30 kilowatt. Uh, so the maximum scalable capacity is up to 120 kilowatt. Uh, right now we have operated it in uh, in a uh, 30 kilowatt uh, operational capacity it's of a gbt standard it has a two guns uh, so uh, the placement of the charger in a pp highway we basically targeted this uh, for the commercial vehicles as uh, you can see in a, in a, in a picture there uh, that's the uh, vehicle uh, it's like an electric vehicle uh, of 11 seats that operate from all the way from Sinduli to Kathmandu and uh, towards Kathmandu to Sinduli. So basically that charger placement there is uh, is for the charging of a, a commercial vehicle. But uh, if anyone, if any EV traveling through that uh, through that route, and if uh, it supports GBT standard, uh, I mean, uh, anybody can go and charge the electric their electric vehicle there. So similar kind of charger we just installed uh, two days before. Uh, my team, they have just uh, came back from installing this charger. Uh, this is the latest charger that we have installed. Uh, we have installed this charger in a Kurintar, uh, it's like a 104 kilometer from Kathmandu. And uh, it's like from there is uh, 100 kilometer to Pokhara and uh, it's like 45 kilometer to Chitun. Again, uh, this is a uh, same charger that we installed in a Mulko. Uh, it's GBT standard charger with two gun. Uh, right now, we have operated it in uh, 30 kilowatt uh, capacity. Uh, if uh, any commercial vehicles uh, or the, any private vehicle with a GBT uh, standard uh, that operate in that route, uh, they can easily go and charge there. And uh, with the placement of this charger, we are trying to encourage uh, any commercial operators that uh, do operate uh, from like uh, Kathmandu to Pokhara or Kathmandu to Chitun in that route. I think it will be one of the one of the uh, main point to charge their vehicles and i think uh, if anybody is trying if anybody is looking forward to operate in that route i think this would be most important charger for them so i think uh, with this charger they can uh, they can think of operating uh, or giving service in that route so uh, uh, although we uh, we talked about the charging stations what are the charging stations uh, uh, from the government sector from private sector from us uh, there are still uh, the, there are still a lot of points to be thought about there are a lot of uh, things to be thought upon uh, so um, i'd like to present a few things it's like a uh, types of charger placement location because not all the all the electric vehicle uh, that operate in nepal that are running in nepal they are uh, uh, the electric vehicles are of a, a different uh, I mean, the charging protocols in the uh, vehicles are different. So, uh, so I mean, uh, even if we talk about our own charger uh, right now, what we place in a current charger, although we tend to uh, install the more chargers of the other uh, charging standard there. But right now, if we talk about the present, uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's really sad that we cannot charge the uh, vehicles of uh, CCS or, uh, or CCS standard or even charging standard there. So. Uh, these things need to be cons considered. Uh, our previous presenters, they have also talked about the standardization of a charger, uh, need to uh, make one common charging standard uh, about the chargers. I think these are the points to consider. And the placement of charger, uh, right now what we see is 
uh, every brands, uh, every automobile brands that, that are uh, selling their uh, electric vehicle in Nepal tend to put charger uh, in their own place or where, where, wherever they like or it's like a little bit, uh, we feel that it's like a little bit uh, disorganized uh, or, or uh, there's a need for organization on that. So I think uh, the placement of the charts or the selection of the location uh, should be as such that uh, can yield the maximum usability uh, of the charger. Uh, so uh, we need to consider the routes, we need to consider the nearest uh, location for the charger, uh, we need to consider uh, the availability of resources there. So, uh, so all in all, we need to we need to uh, we need to think uh, the placing a charger in a certain location. Uh, will it yield a maximum usability or will it just be like uh, people or the EV owner may, might skip that charger and just go to another charger? So placement of a charger, selection of a location, I think it's uh, one of the crucial. So, and the uh, cost and investment uh, regarding the charger. Uh, later on, I mentioned one, uh, 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 I mentioned one uh, point called a, call a business model uh, there. So uh, it's also related to cost uh, investment uh, and the installation cost and maintenance cost. So right now, uh, just setting up a electric uh, vehicle charging stations uh, and uh, just uh, adding up like a 20% margin on the uh, fare of electricity, it won't, uh, it won't make a sustainable business model. So because the cost of uh, the cost of investment, the initial cost of the charger itself, the installation cost, the maintenance cost, the cost of uh, location, all the uh, rents, fare, it's too high. So uh, we need to think about that. We need to we need to think about those models that can make uh, this infrastructure more viable uh, because this uh, will need a lot of investments. Uh, and uh, without investment, this is impossible. So we need to think about, we need to discuss about the business model that might suit uh, where uh, where the interested party can just uh, just operate install and operate the charging stations there, and and also the next point is availability of a appropriate location. Uh, in 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 some cases we have also faced that we'd like to install a charger in certain point that we think uh, will be will be suitable uh, there, but uh, the accessibility problem, the parking facility there, the uh, the uh, the, the lack of uh, adequate space there uh, is, is is like a uh, it's like preventing us uh, from uh, installing a charger there. So these are all the these are all the uh, what we can say uh, it, it are the are the factors that are holding us back. And I already talked about the charging standards, difference in the charging standard among the EV brands, and the other important thing is like a uh, policies, guideline, regulation. Presence of a regulatory body uh, that can uh, that can that can regulate the operation because uh, right now it's just like a, it's like a very beginning and uh, and everybody or the every uh, supplier they are doing their own uh, working on their own but uh, in the future when this uh, this uh, this infrastructure or this whole proposition it goes uh, grows uh, uh, into big uh, there is uh, clearly a requirement for a uh, clarity. Uh, some uh, SOPs, operating procedures regarding the charging station. And right now, since uh, the NEA, uh, I mean, uh, like it or not, uh, NEA is looking after all these uh, all these uh, charging station infrastructure. So there should be like a proper guideline. And uh, if required, there should be like a separate regulatory body that can look upon the charging stations and that can regularize it, that can, uh, that can uh, work on the proper SOPs, guidelines, regulations. Uh, on it. So I think uh, it will it will be it will be it will become up uh, it will come up as a uh, as a I mean a necessary requirement in a very very near future. And also the other point is like uh, adequate power supplies, uh, irregularity in power supplies, and also the approval duration uh, for the uh, for the for the connection lines uh, from a NEA. So a lot of uh, lot of uh, even in our household. Uh, we we face uh, the ir irregularities uh, in the power supplies of uh, voltage fluctuation. Uh, so uh, for a charging station, this is like uh, one of the uh, one of the challenge. And uh, we've been hearing we've been hearing from the uh, from the charging stations that we have been operating in a mood board, We have not been put in touch. Uh, it's like uh, because 
I would like to I would like to give an example. Uh, the charging station in Munpur. Uh, basically, we have targeted it, uh, it for a commercial vehicles. Uh, the the vehicle that we have sold in that route, there is like already vehicles uh, operating from Kathmandu to Sinduli Road. Uh, so whenever they uh, they they come from Sinduli, uh, they come to that point, the charge point, and they charge their vehicles and they complete the journey towards Kathmandu. And similar is a case uh, when they go back from Kathmandu. But uh, whenever they reach there, at the time of uh, at the time there, uh, the passengers are there. They 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 eat foods or they take like a tea coffee there in that hotel. Uh, but the vehicle it's been charged while the vehicle is been charged there. Uh, but due to the irregular supply, there is like a power cut. There is like a no power supply there. So uh, it, it should be like a kind of very awkward situation there because they need to charge the vehicle at all costs uh to reach to reach to the destination so uh for this uh for this kind of for this kind of uh places for this kind of charging stations i think the nes should look and uh give it a priority so uh you may be you we can also think about a situation like we may have to we may have to place a backup generator just to uh just to charge that vehicle vehicle because that vehicle cannot work uh wait there uh long enough uh, just to just waiting for the power supply to get back uh, and complete that journey. So it's it's uh, I mean it's it's not possible. So and 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 it doesn't make any sense uh, keeping uh, the backup generator there and uh, burning a fuel and charging a uh, and charging a vehicle rather than uh, you could easily just operate a fuel vehicle or the IC vehicle. So I think any any should uh, keep these uh, these factors. Uh, in the, in the priority and I think look upon that and even for the approval duration for the power supply for the connection I think they should expedite and I think they should expedite the process and just uh, if they are if they are really serious on this matter I think they should uh, they should do it very uh, complete the process very very quickly and other point is like uh, I mean uh, at present uh, whoever is operating ele uh, electric charging station it's like kind of uh, in an individual basis on a standalone basis. So all of the chargers, it's been operated. Uh, the EV owner just go there and charge, and and whatever the payment is, they just pay and leave. Uh, if you have to, if you have to uh, check uh, where where the charging station, is, uh, where kind of find the charging station, is that charging station on an idle mode or is is it like a free to charge? So it's not like uh, we cannot do that at the moment. So all the integration in the networking of the charger are creating one big system so that uh, EV owners. Uh, can easily track the location and the charging standard. I think that's uh, that's also the necessity. And I already talked about the business model. And I'd like to talk uh, about the EV owners' attitude also. We as a uh, in the EV owners, whoever is uh, whoever are owning the EV, uh, they should consider this charging station as like a, like a resource. And, and and that resource is not there just to fulfill their demands. It's it it there it, it is a resource uh, that should be there for all. So uh, I mean uh, we uh, we've been hearing been hearing the social media. We've been hearing the feedback. So a uh, few days back, I was just reading uh, uh, reading uh, somewhere in the social media that uh, one EV owner he just went into a shopping mall uh, and um, and he went to charge uh, charge his EV there. And there was already uh, one EV already in a charging uh, position there. And uh, after three or four hours, when he came back, uh, that EV was still there. And uh, maybe that EV was already charged. And, uh, he, uh, and, and, and that EV owner also mentioned that uh, two or three EV, they just came there to charge and uh, seeing that uh, it's uh, one EV is already there charging, they just sit and back. So I think. Uh, the owner, uh, the mentality or the attitude of EV owners should also uh, we should also think uh, think uh, about it. And uh, while we talk about the charging stations, we tend to talk only about the charging stations of the four wheeler, uh, the passenger vehicle, or the commercial vehicle. But uh, the popularity of a two wheeler uh, EV are also growing. And uh, so I think we should also talk uh, about the charging stations for the two wheelers as well. And about the commercial vehicles as well. Uh, also, we should I think we should talk about that one as well. And they are user friendliness, interactiveness, 
of the EV uh, EV charging stations. The uh, uh, we can't we can't assume that all the uh, all the owners or all the driver of EV uh, will be will be uh, I mean uh, literate or will be literate to that extent to use that uh, we use that facility. So uh, it should be very uh, user interactive, uh, easy to use, and uh, considering uh, the the electricity involved there, it should be safe to use as well. Uh, so uh, there should be uh, steps to steps to mitigate the electrical hazards as well. So these are the few points that uh, I think we should consider. And, and these are not the all, maybe there could be like a, other few points as well to talk about. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, this was the presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, thank you very much, Mukundaji, for uh, your presentation. It was really informative and uh, you really explained uh, the, the various things in details about the key points to consider for the charging stations construction in Nepal. Thank you very much. Uh, now, as I requested earlier, if um, uh, the audience have any questions, we can uh, put them to Mukundaji and Bharaji. But uh, considering the time, I would uh, suggest to put them in chat box. Uh, and um, maybe Mukundaji and Bharaji can also uh, respond um, to the questions and comments in the chat box. Uh, so maybe we need to jump into the another presentation since uh, the presenter for uh, the another session, Ms. Chaitanya. Uh, Kunari from uh, WRI India is already here with us in the session. Miss uh, Chaitanya, are you there? Hi. Hi Chaitanya. Welcome to the session. One uh, slide. Thank you. Yeah. Nas, one slide up. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Uh, Ms. Chaitanya Kunari is a, a senior manager with the Sustainable Cities and Transport team at the WRI India, and where she leads various research and project initiative on the electric mobility at the national and state levels. Uh, and her area of research includes state level policies and regulations to promote electric mobility in India. So her presentation will be focused on India EV charging case study. Uh, well, now without delaying, I would like to invite Ms. Uh, Kunari uh, to Start your presentation. The flow is yours, please. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Chaitanya. I'm a clean transport systems researcher at WRI India. And I'll be speaking about a very specific case study on planning for EV charging infrastructure. So essentially taking, um, taking you through a couple of the steps that are involved in planning for public charging infrastructure in a city. And uh, so, yeah, just going straight to the next slide. When planning for public charging infrastructure, uh, this actually helps us assess the number of public charges needed and the optimal locations for setting up public charging in a city. It can be undertaken at different scales. It can be taken up as a city level exercise or as a neighborhood level exercise. And when you're locating and siting your public charging, there are three key principles to keep in mind. And those th three principles are um, highlighted on the slide. First is to maximize accessibility. The second is to maximize utilization. And the third is to minimize cost. Now, when we're talking about accessibility, we're talking about the ease of finding and getting to public charging facilities from any location, which is why network planning with a greater number of distributed charge points at regular intervals makes charging more, uh, more accessible rather than you know, having only a few really high powered hubs in one part of the city it's better to have a more distributed network and a planned approach allows us to undertake a distributed network. The second is also to ensure that public charging infrastructure is located in areas with high charging demand. And this can be projected based on our understanding of traffic and transportation patterns and planning. And uh, a lot of times, Charge point operators might be um, doing the market research to understand what these locations are, but city officials often uh, base their decisions on where they have public land available. So rather than that, if you take an approach where you're looking at where the charging demand is and then position your public charging infrastructure there, you're likely to see higher usage. Um, in many Indian cities, what you see is 
uh, public charges are placed in some remote government location, which doesn't really have much foot traffic or vehicular traffic. And so while the number of charges might be available, the, um, I mean, it's not a high number of charges, but while some charges are available, you still don't find them to be easy to find or use. And the final point obviously is the cost of public charging infrastructure, which uh, depends on two key aspects. The first is the cost of the, uh, the land and the second is the cost of the power supply connection. These are the two inputs that need to be kept in mind. So for today, what we're actually focusing on is how to plan your public charging to um, maximize access and utilization. Um, given the time, I would like to focus on those two aspects. So the first step to uh, the first step to doing that is actually to look at the process for estimating public EV charging requirements in a city. So this can be divided into the five or six steps that um, I've just highlighted here. And I'll be taking the case study of the city of Hyderabad in India to actually illustrate how we can do this to understand what the EV charging demand might be for a given horizon year of 2025 and 2030. And essentially what we do is base this on the projected targets that uh, cities or countries might have for EV penetration. So for instance, uh, in India, you have certain targets and you have certain projections in terms of uh, how much of uh, EV penetration will be reached for different segments by 2025 and 2030. So we've used that understanding. So as you can see, we've divided these into four different uh, vehicular segments. We've looked at electric two-wheelers and electric cars, <clears throat> excuse me, the private ones. And in the commercial vehicles, we've looked at passenger auto, uh, auto rickshaws as well as uh, commercial taxis. Now, um, we haven't focused on uh, the commercial vehicles focused to some extent on freight as well, but we haven't focused on heavy, uh, heavy vehicles in this particular methodology because heavy vehicles, usually electric buses in a, in a city, often have their own routes and networks and would uh, the charging infrastructure would be planned uh, separately for that. So as you can see, we've taken an, um, a vehicular growth rate as um, based on um, the past uh, compounded annual growth rates and projected it into the future, understood what the EV penetration rate might be by uh, the horizon years of 2025 and 2030, and then did a cumulated aggregation of how many EVs you would have on the road by 2025, 2030. Next, the, the next step would be to calculate the daily energy needs for EV charging. So different EV segments have different battery capacities and driving ranges, as well as different utilization levels. So to assess the energy needs, we've assumed the average battery capacity and driving range based on market data. We also assumed a daily usage in terms of the number of kilometers driven for the different EV segments with higher driving kilometers for commercial vehicle segments, as you can see. So based on these numbers, we arrive at the daily energy need for EV charging for each vehicle for different vehicle segments, which is the final column over here. Then um, we aggregate this essentially to understand the daily energy needs at the city level. So what this helps us to do is, um, and this can also be converted into total number of chargers as well, of course. So uh, if you take an understand, I mean, based on uh, a charger capacity or based on the charger uh, uh, power rating, you would, uh, you would understand how many hours it's operational for. And based on that, you can, uh, you can un understand how much of this daily energy need can be served by one charger and therefore um, uh, how many chargers would be needed at the city level based on this energy demand. This is what we've done here. As you can see, we've taken certain estimations. We've said that uh, for electric two wheelers, a 3.3 kilowatt AC charger should be adequate and, um, uh, and the, their share of public charging is 100%. So, so sorry, one thing I might I'm just saying is private vehicles are expected to use public charging less. So only 10% of their needs, uh, charging needs are expected to be fulfilled by uh, 
uh, by public charging. The rest of the time, they're expected to charge at home or at their offices. Whereas for commercial vehicles, we've taken 100% of the share, of, public, uh, share of, uh, of their charging needs to be met by public charging. Now, these, uh, uh, these percentages can be uh, varied based on, uh, based on what we see as uh, usage patterns, of course. So these are the energy needs we get based on that. And then here, um, all of the pri uh, private charging, uh, the public charging that uh, electric two-wheelers do would be served by a 3.3 kilowatt AC charger. Similarly, you have certain assumptions of which kind of chargers would be used to serve different types of electric vehicles. And these assumptions, again, are based on people's charging patterns. So for example, a private electric four-wheeler might charge largely at home using a, seven, uh, using a charger of their own. When they come to public uh, charging, they might either be doing destination charging when they go to a mall or when they when they uh, park in a public parking somewhere, or they might be doing on-the-go charging where they are really looking to just top up their vehicle very quickly and move on. So that's why we've given 50-50 for private uh, cars. But if you look at taxis, if uh, all of their charging needs are being fulfilled by uh, public chargers, you can assume that they would also charge overnight where they're not required to, uh, uh, to fast charge and can plug into a seven kilowatt uh, AC charger, for example. And during the day, uh, in order to maximize the utilization of the vehicle, they might be using the fast charger. So some of these assumptions are based, taken on this basis and taking a, taking a utilization factor of 15% for each charger, you get a certain understanding of the number of chargers needed at the city level for, for the city of Hyderabad, which, which has a population of about 10 million. Um, almost. So, so this gives you an indication of, uh, of what that looks like. So now we've understood how to estimate it at a city level, but how do you distribute it spatially? How do you know how much is needed in a given part of the city? So this is where we do a geospatial analysis of EV charging demand. Now, again, um, we've divided this into a few steps where uh, we essentially divide the area and, and, and this can be undertaken as a hybrid approach. That, uh, that's one thing I'd like to highlight uh, straight off the bat, given the quality of data that is available um, in, in South Asian countries and, and in, the, in cities uh, and emerging uh, economies, we might find that we don't have all the data to do only a geospatial analysis. So a lot of times combining a macro level geospatial analysis with a micro level site analysis and community engagement actually helps you arrive at a better uh, uh, spatial planning. But here we're covering the macro level geospatial analysis aspect of it. So the first um, step is basically to divide your, this is the city of Hyderabad, the map for the city of Hyderabad. And uh, we divide it into, into grids of uh, grid cells of one kilometer by one kilometer. Having done that, we start identifying and mapping data points of parameters that have an influence on charging demand. So here in this slide, we've mapped the major transit stations, metro stations, railway stations, and bus depots, which are usually located in commercial areas where there is significant parking available and where many people might park their vehicle for extended periods of time for multimodal connectivity. Uh, in this slide, we've mapped various points of interest like shopping malls, movie theaters, restaurants, and eateries, where many people will be coming and going over the course of a day, parking for an hour or two while they conduct leisure activities. Points of interest are selected based on the estimated values of daily footfall, availability of parking, and duration of parking. So for instance, post offices and ATMs are not selected as points of interest because the parking availability and duration of parking at these locations is very low. So as you can see, this is a bit of a, um, a judgment process in terms of what parameters you can take as good proxies to estimate high traffic and demand. Um, for instance, we, uh, we would have loved to use uh, origin destination data from you know, the transportation plan of the city, but that was not uh, available 
for this particular city in an updated manner. The last one was done in, before 2010, and we didn't feel that the data from that was adequately representative of the traffic today. So we used other proxies. But uh, of course, based on the data you have, you can use that essentially to understand where you're going to see higher concentrations of uh, activity. Now for each, uh, so this is what all the different data points sort of, um, this is public parking as well. We mapped uh, um, petrol pumps and public parking spaces. Now, and this is what sort of they all look like. And apart from the, and just from these spatial concentrations where you see the different points con uh, concentrated, you can start getting an idea of where the public charging demand is likely to be higher. So now for each parameter, we actually assigned a weightage on how each uh, vehicle segment would charge at a given location type. So of the 10% charging needs of private vehicles that are fulfilled at public charging facilities, we identified different weightages. Again, this is, this is based on some literature analysis as well, they, um, as well as some sort of assessment on uh, these um, parking locations and uh, how often people are likely to um, use these. Again, these are absolutely variable, but they are used, they're useful as a tool in estimating, but are obviously not meant to be sacrosanct. Similarly, we did the same exercise for commercial vehicles and the weightages assigned there might be slightly different because commercial vehicles move in a different manner and go uh, and, and are, uh, are more likely to be found at uh, locations like maybe petrol, unlike metro stations and railway stations, for example. So, Using this process, what we arrived at are the total daily energy needs at the city level in each grid for 20. This is for the year of 2025. Um, so as you can see, the charging needs for 2025 have like uh, have the highest charging demand crossing 6,000 kilowatts in one uh, in a one square kilometer area in the darkest uh, uh, in the darkest green cells, this is 2025. And this is for 2030, where the top demand has actually crossed 26,000 kilowatts in these deep maroon cells. And naturally, many more parts of the city are seeing higher charging demand. This is just for public charging. So based on the spatial distribution, we can then assess how many charges may be needed at a disaggregated level by proportionately allocating charges at a disaggregated grid cell level. At the same time, so this is, this is a demand-based assessment of charging requirement. At the same time, we should also ensure that an access-based uh, uh, minimum requirement is fulfilled. By that, what I mean is there are some areas, large parts of the city where you can see that the charging demand is not projected to be high. At the same time, there should be a minimum amount of access to charging stations that are provided or charging points that is provided in every part of the city. So the Indian government, for example, provided a target that said that three into um, there should be a charging station within every nine square kilometers in a city, every three kilometers by three kilometers. So something like that is an access based target, which ensures that each area has access to at least a one or two um, chargers, even if the demand isn't there so that it doesn't become a, a challenge or obstacle when people are looking whether to purchase an EV. So, so essentially, this was just a sort of very quick way of assessing how to plan for your charging. Um, the next steps which, uh, which follow on after this uh, include going down to the site level, actually understanding what sort of locations are available and then undertaking uh, and then providing the required number of chargers. But uh, we won't be able to cover that in this particular session. Um, I hope this was useful. Uh, a lot of this is actually uh, uh, provided in the Handbook of Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure Implementation that was published by, by the research think tank of the government of India, the Niti IO. Thank you. Um, and I believe that given the similarities of the vehicular traffic and modes um, and the electrification patterns in uh, Nepal, this could, uh, a lot of what, um, uh, what is happening in uh, India could apply to uh, uh, Nepal as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Saitanya, for the very informative presentation. Is uh, 
India being a neighbor of Nepal, um, the, the cases and lessons learned from India are always useful for Nepal, because we have very similar cases. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, now, it's, we are already crossing the time. I would like to request my colleague from Plenary Asia to display the presentation uh, from Ho, uh, Ho, Ho Kyung Lee. Uh, although we, we, we have recorded presentation from him, uh, so we, we don't have him live in the session, but we have recorded presentation from him. So let us um, proceed ahead with the presentation last because we have very limited time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hu Gyeong Lee. And I'm the CEO of EBR company in South Korea. And today I shortly introduce to you about the South Korea and Seoul EV charging case studies. And first of all, I shortly introduce about myself. Uh, I'm EBO and I'm the electric safety trainer in South Korea and uh, electric service solution provider and the charging plant consultant and the light small let's make a consultant and uh, provide the PPE personal product equipment packages to my customers. The Korean government policy and uh, recently President Moon announced officially that uh, uh, South Korea will join to the net zero system and by the 2015. Uh, that means the internal combustion engine vehicle will be disappeared from at least 2035 or so. So in South Korea, our electric vehicle market is getting increased very fast, even the, during the pandemic issues. And our original target in 2020 in Korea electric target is uh, 0.2 million electric vehicle and 0.2 8 million hybrid and the 9,000 fuel electric vehicle. Now the target is almost done and um, during the, even during the corona issues. So right now at current stage, the almost 0.2 million electric vehicle and uh, 0.82 hybrid and even 13,000 fuel electric vehicle. And getting fast increase is expected in the next few years. And according to this kind of the atmosphere, the Korean government announced that uh, uh, e-mobility policies in the 2019. And 2019, uh, the Korean government announced that uh, 2020 future mobility number one society our target. And the fuel cell and the electric vehicle number one market is our target. And the 2027, the autonomous vehicle up to level four, uh, we're gonna try to make us in this kind of society. In the very next year, in the 2020, actually in the last year, and uh, the government announced again okay, with the future mobility populations. And the target is uh, target is shrink down and the much faster than the original target. So the 2022, actually the next year, is a future mobility population first year. And our new target is the 2025 is electric vehicle 1.1 million and the first electric vehicle is 0. 2 million in just in domestic market. And the 2025 electric vehicle is getting much faster and just one year is 0.53 million electric vehicle. And you know that the South Korea, the three battery companies very famous and get uh, many projects uh, from the global customers like uh, LG Energy Solutions, SK Innovations and the Samsung SDI. So our target is 2022 and the world number one uh, autonomous vehicle up to level three and uh, level four in the next year. So there are, there are many uh, electric vehicle projects in the South Korea area, especially in the Jeju Island here located here. Uh, and it's the electric charges and Jeonnam area is famous for small electric vehicle, light like small duty electric vehicle. And the jumbo area and the special purpose electric vehicle like a garbage truck and a cleaning truck, wash truck, and the others as well. In Gyeongnam area, famous for the unmanned ship, there are some projects 
and the Ustan area actually there is a Hyundai uh, plant is located in there and the green mobility and the pure electric vehicle. In Gyeongbuk area there's a battery recycling uh, area project and now getting on and the Gangwon area electric vehicle, small electric vehicle platform and the logistic electric vehicle. Chungnam area and there are many cities and start to the autonomous vehicle pilot project. So in South Korea right now, the electric vehicle market status, actually there is no uh, official uh, numbers uh, until now. The, the, until the 2021 April, the electric vehicle in the blue line is uh, uh, 0 0.2 15 uh, million electric vehicle and uh, almost 800,000 uh, 800, hybrid vehicle. And uh, pure electric vehicle, when you compare to the start point to the 2018, and very fast increases now showing in the electric vehicle in market, South Korea. And for about the uh, regional area, that uh, most uh, electric vehicle area is uh, now Seoul. The before the 2021 April, that the Jeju Islands is uh, one of the uh, best one, but right now the Seoul capital city, and uh, now get increased much faster than the Jeju Island and the near area in the Seoul and the named Gyeonggi is the uh, uh, next one. So it seems like that in the, uh, based on the capital area, then the electric vehicle demand is getting increased very fast. And we have many uh, electric vehicle right now in here in the passenger vehicle and the e bus systems and the small vehicles and now populating. And the recently, Hyundai uh, launched a new vehicle, Hyundai Ioniq and Kia EV6, now getting popular and the uh, market is getting increased. Uh, for what the electric vehicle charging infrastructure in systems, and uh, we have uh, many electric charging infrastructure in South, South Korea. And uh, for about the, the first charger, and until the last year, uh, this is uh, now ongoing. The, Almost 10,000 fast chargers located in the several areas and the highway, uh, less area and the apartment and the commercial area. So the right now the, the more than uh, 10,000 fast chargers and uh, 60,000 slow chargers and total uh, 71,000 electric charging infrastructures right now in South Korea. Uh, but in some cases, the, the, this is mixed up and uh, this number is only for the public electric charging. So we, when we consider the uh, personal charging infrastructures, then the number will be in case much higher. And the Seoul is right now the number two area, the public electric charging infrastructure and we're getting more and more because the, uh, many people uh, live in the now apartment and uh, there are new regulation and uh, law uh, around recently and uh, uh, new apartments need to install the uh, electric charging infrastructure up to 5% 5 of the uh, total amount of the rooms. And so early this year, Seoul City announced that the, the new target and the policies. So Seoul announced that uh, they will running the e-mobility policy with the uh, Green transportation area in the Gangnam, uh, Gangnam style, yeah, Gangnam area and the Yeoido, and they will learning with the smart e mobility and the e bus system. And there is some advanced smart mobility area, uh, the several areas, the smart mobility area with autonomous vehicle and the logistics hub center, uh, like a Hyundai and Kia will set up the build, uh, set up the logistics hub center all together. And uh, there are some green and clean area and the safe and EG personal mobility. And the two here, even the uh, small ones. And the kickboard. So eco-friendly low speed vehicle load will be around in there. And uh, the other load will be uh, occupied by the e-bus and the pure electric vehicle system. So to meet the optimized demand response, we're gonna try to make some uh, transportation monitoring and control system and solutions. You know that South Korea is very famous for the uh, best IT solutions and technology. 
uh, and with the socially, we harden the emission regulation and uh, try to not uh, uh, get in get into the city, uh, get into the inner city for the internal combustion engine. How about the EBUS? Uh, we have some uh, plan to provide the 400 electric EBUS in this year, and city bus almost 300, and town bus is uh, uh, almost 100. And uh, we replace the internal combustion and the bus. How about the pure electric vehicle? And uh, in this year, we South City will have a plan to produce uh, and supply the 40 uh, pure electric bus, and uh, we set up the pure electric vehicle charging stations as well. And especially for the public park, a uh, very famous one is the Nam San area, Nam Mountain. The mountain there are already currently 15 e bus running, and we'll add 10 more buses. And uh, this load is all allowed for the e bus, not for the conventional bus. How about the e-taxi and there are various programs and to get the subsidies and uh, uh, for the e-taxi and the convenience and the welfare as well. So there are many electric vehicle taxi and the pure electric taxi Nexo as now increasing and uh, recently Ioniq 5 and the EV6 is very popular for the taxi drivers for the long distance and the low maintenance charge. And so Immobility policy about the uh, autonomous vehicle. There are some areas and with uh, some pilot program with uh, advanced companies and the local companies and uh, global companies like Lavia or and uh, There are many, uh, 50 more electric vehicle, electric autonomous vehicle now uh, under evaluation. And uh, our target in this year is uh, to supply the more than 11. Uh, electric vehicle uh, at current stage and uh, recently the Seoul government subsidy already gone. That means that everybody wants to get the uh, electric vehicle better than the internal combustion engine. So there are many uh, kind of the e-bus and the e-taxi uh, project and based on the uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructures. How about the pure electric vehicle more than uh, up to almost 1,000, almost 1,000 and the six uh, additional charging stations, fuel cell charging stations, and uh, socially targeted uh, 5K uh, in next year. And there are some examples of the GS is one of the big group in South Korea, and they already set up the com complex stations, uh, integrated with the conventional fuel station, hydrogen charging station, and the LPG gas station, EV charging station, convenience store, coffee shop, laundry shop, and uh, the users can enjoy their life and enjoy the services uh, during the car is charging. And uh, recently, Hyundai uh, makes some own uh, electric vehicle charging uh, station named the EPIT. And they are using the up to 350 kilowatt very fast charging services. Uh, because the currently Hyundai Ioniq and the Kia EV6 uh, can support the 800 volt system by the e-boost, and uh, they can charge 80 percent in just in you know, 18 uh, minutes. This is some real example in the one of the highway rest area. Uh, we can charge up to 80 percent in just in 80 minutes. So there are some key questions from your side, and I will ask them my uh, opinions by one by one. So what planning measures of a charging station network? So there are many considerable uh, factors like a cost, product, performance, vehicle, and the weather and the data requirement, certifications, uh, many factors. So to make it clear and to make it optimized, uh, in several cases, and like a USA and the other project, using the some uh, platform platform software and the management uh, software. Uh, that one of the examples is the site tracker. Site tracker is uh, already uh, uses, used for many uh, electric charging infrastructure provider like a Volta and the other uh, things, uh, similar like a charge point that we can optimize our resources and uh, can manage uh, day by day and uh, can get some report and uh, usually can check the status by the dashboard. And what is the ideal policy and the regulatory framework for it? Uh, so I think, in my opinion, we can 
uh, make it step by step by the product installation, optimization, and the maintenance. And for about the product, I think that uh, we can consider about the product spec and the specifications and uh, how we can communicate to each other by the OCPP and the others. And next one is the installation, and uh, there are some differences between the public charging and the personal charging, and, uh, up to the capacity like a fast charging, slow charging, mobile tire, and uh, smart consent. So we can make set up the different type of the uh, install gu installation guidelines and the requirements at the time. Uh, for about the optimization, uh, we need to consider about the electric density and the cells and uh, consider about the usage density and the efficiencies. And uh, there, are, there are many diversities in, in cities and uh, depends on the requirements and demands. So we can mix it up all together to make a high efficiencies. So finally, the next one is the maintenance. So we need to control and the monitoring the current status and the progress and the status as well. Uh, so if there are any issue, we need to uh, make some uh, maintenance in a short time and the repair in a short time to make the satisfaction from the customers. But the, the, the best important thing all this process is, yeah, as you know, the safety. Safety is uh, the best issues we need, we need to make it so what is the next one is what is the key consideration in grid operation and the management considering the pulse electricity based on hydro power but uh, fluctuating power supply you know that in, in some area south asia uh, there are some breakout happened uh, because not enough capability and not enough uh, power plant and not enough um, uh, situation so in this case we need to make some uh, alternative solution like a ESS battery uh, support system and PV solar system and wind and uh, region, uh, re renewable energy project all together integrate to make it uh, better. So to, to make it better in this kind of things all together, we need to operate the EMS systems. EMS is the energy management system. And uh, to operate the EMS very well, and we need to integrate with the VPP. VPP is the virtual power plant. So we need to set it up uh, from the start, and then uh, we can easily uh, modify by one by one, like a model system. And the next one is, uh, what is the suitable charging solution for various models of transport, transport for example, e-bus, e-car, and e-2 and 3-wheelers, case examples? So in the many of the cases, uh, it uh, shows the very similar type in the different areas. For about the e-bus, the best way is the best charging at the garage, because they have some less time in the garage when they have uh, return to the from the duty and in some cases they're using the swap system or the or the wireless induction charging but it cost is very high so usually using the charging uh, charging systems at garage what about the e-cars like a passenger vehicle and uh, suv and yeah the small commercial vehicle they're using different uh different type of the uh methods to operate this very well so, for example, like a highway less area, the fast charging is general uh, because they are very, uh, have to hurry up. Uh, so, in most of the commercial area, they're usually using the fast charger, mid, mid charger, mobile charge, and mix it up. So, the customer can select, it depends on their stations. And uh, usually, the home charger and company charger are using the slow charging. The difference is that usually the home charging using the at night time and company is during the work time. And the post car like e rickshaw e tuk tuk uh, the better swapping type is very popular uh, among the south uh, South Asia. And for the two and three wheelers, uh, the plain plain area usually uh, using the swapping type. It's very convenient and uh, can save the time and money. Um, but if there is uh, some land that are up here and the down is in there, then the much power and torque is required. So the integrated type with the high power system is usually used. So these are some examples. In Jeju Island, we already use the EPA SWAT system, but as I said to you, that mostly we're using the uh, garage fast charging. 
and uh, an IS synergy using the mid speed of the charging systems and the uh, USA pre wire using the mobile systems. In Korean, they are using the RFID concepts in the public building and the apartments, apartment and RFID or the smart consent we are already using and are now increasing very fast. And uh, usually the, the home charger is a world type home charger, but now the RFID type and the smart consent number is getting increased better than the world charger type. And for about the two and three fillers, uh, maybe you already know that the Taiwan Skoguro type, that swapping system is popular in the plain area. But if there is some uh, uh, climb ratio is required, then the, the Korean type with high power efficiency is required. So I think the how we can make some synergy with the Korean tech technical companies and the, the, the agencies and the, based on the IT solutions and the regional electricity and the network uh, environment, then the, we can make them together by the technical transfer and make some partnerships and uh, make together and uh, manufacturing in the local manufacturing. And then uh, cost competitive is uh, based on the uh, low, low labor cost and uh, uh, by and in parallel we can uh, make some consulting and the training support and uh, to make a, a better government strategies at the same time. Uh, if you want to know more about the, my activity and the place visit the EV or e-mobility player in this uh, World Virtual Event site. Uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, this is my email so please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Since we are already uh, 20 minutes uh, late behind the proper schedule to finish the program, uh, I will not be uh, taking more time. So I would like to invite uh, Mr. Bhusan Taladar, sir, uh, to share the, uh, to wrap up and share the outstanding dis discussion uh, of the training is this is the not the last day tomorrow is the last day as we have on-site visit in-person visit so i'd like to invite bhushan sir to wrap up the training what's the training and also briefly share about the field visit for tomorrow and also close the uh, virtual training session thank you very much um thank you Shankar. first of all i'd like to thank each and every one of you for um staying with us for three days and all the way to the end, although it's already 20 minutes past five, um, we still have 21 participants here. Um, some of them, of course, are organizers, but um, thank you for your patience and I hope it has been useful for you. And thank you to all the speakers, um, Harm this morning and, and and then, you know, Sagar, Bharat Mukunda, all of you, you have been fabulous. I think, you know, that my key takeaways from the past three days uh, would be one, um, you know, this has been a good, this has provided a good overview for the EV ecosystem as a whole, uh, both globally and in Nepal. Um, there's a lot that's happening and we still have to learn a lot. This is just, uh, we've been, we've given, we've been given a good overview, but, and, and we have deep dived into um, charging infrastructure, technical issues, even retrofitting yesterday, but um, there's still a lot to learn. Um, second, I think we can, there's a lot of activities going around all over the world. Um, and we can learn a lot from Europe, from different places in Asia, and particularly India, where we have a similar culture in terms of how we drive, the kind of vehicles we drive, the traffic pattern, and so on. Um, so I think there's a lot we can learn from India as well. And then they have done a lot of work, both in terms of research, in terms of policy, and of course, a lot of our vehicles are coming from India, and of course, China as well. Um, but at the same time, there's been some good experiences in Nepal as well. I mean, today we saw a lot of these little charging stations that have been established uh, mainly by the private sector through their own initiative. And I think with that, we can learn quite a bit and um, that will pave the way as we move forward. So I think this is overall, this has been a good experience um, to learn what's happening in um, abroad as well as in Nepal. Um, and it's good to see the interest shown by um, quite a few participants in you know, asking questions and getting engaged in these discussions, although in an online format, sometimes that's a little difficult to do. Um, so tomorrow we'll actually have a in-person um, training, more of a visit to Digo's um, workshop where they have their charging infrastructure, 
They have everything from a motorcycle to a bus, um, an electric motorcycle to a bus there, so that you can actually see it, feel it, um, talk to them about it. And if you really are interested um, in, in joining us, it's, it's not going to be a three hour session. It's probably just going to be just about an hour and a half or so. You can um, join us. Of course, you need to be in Kathmandu for that. Um, in Kathmandu, in Naksal, which is, and their workshop is right located right next to the Marriott Hotel over there. Um, you can see the map in the, um, in, in the website um, and um, you can register. The, I think the registration um, link is in the chat box. If not, can you please um, put it there? We can accommodate at the most um, 20 people um, to participate um, in this because we don't want to create a big crowd. But um, I think I just learned that there's so far about 10 people have signed up. So I think we can you know, take up some more people if necessary. And um, it'll be a very informal, informative um, interaction, interaction that we will do with people who are actually working in it. So you, you'll see what is happening and you'll experience it. This, of course, is the first of the trainings that we're going to do in Kathmandu um, through Solutions Plus project. So this is not the end of it. And please let us know what kind of training could be useful um, for you in the future, whether you come from an um, academic um, environment, whether you're, you're teaching or are studying or you're from the government or the private sector, if there's anything um, out of these, you know, three days, you feel that this is an area where we want to, um, where we could benefit more um, from experiences in Europe, as well as um, different places in Asia, please let us know. Um, we'll try to organize these trainings. Um, because of the pandemic, a lot of these trainings would be um, online, but as we move forward, we may um, organize some in-person trainings as well. And as we move forward, I think there's a lot, as I said, happening in Nepal. Um, and from Sajayatat side as well, I'd like to say that Sajayatat will probably be putting up its um, charging station, which will be the biggest charging station in Nepal once it's installed. Um, as Mukunda said earlier, um, 20 chargers, uh, mainly for buses. And these would also be available for other um, vehicles once the buses leave the depot um, in the morning. So. Um, that is something we're going to do. We're going to be operating and maintaining buses as well. Of course, um, Murkandaji and his team is going to help us with that. Um, there will be 40 buses that we'll be doing, and plus four more that, um, small sightseeing buses that will be coming from, for, to us, um, mainly to, to operate in Laritpur area. So um, we'll be doing quite a bit of work in this area, and then plus we're working on um, conversion um, of a diesel bus to um, electric. So that is something we're working on. So if you want to, be, if you're more in, interested in listening more to it, um, learning about it, you can contact us. Plus we'll also be going, working on some Safa Tempo um, improvement as well through Solutions Plus. So there's a lot that's happening. Please keep in touch. And for now, I think um, we've already gone 25 past the hour. So I'd like to say thank you very much for being with us and I'll see, we'll see um, some of you tomorrow. And a lot of you, please keep in touch. Um, you know where Sazayata is. If you're in Kathmandu, Pulchok, um, it's in Pulchok. You can, or you can keep in touch through email. So with that, I'd like to close the session, and um, thank you again for to all the organizers. Um, you know, Clean Air Asia, um, Wuppertal, and everybody else who has uh, helped. I'm not naming individuals. Of course, there are quite a few people who have helped in this process. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you. Thank you, and see you next time.